playing every one of the top 40 records being played on every radio station in the United States is a communication to the children to take a trip, to cop out, to groove. The psychedelic jackets on the record albums have their own hidden messages. We don't want you to smoke genetically modified ganja. We want you to smoke the real thing. We want you to smoke the natural herb. Some call it marijuana. Some call it sense media. Some call it lamb's bread. And some people call it... Welcome to another edition of the Adam Dunn Show. I'm your host, Adam Dunn. And I'm supposed to have nope. a, I'm supposed to have a co-host named Duke Diamond right now. Ooh. I was literally supposed to say, and my co-host, no nope. Duke Diamond. None of that. Unfortunately, he's driving the wrong direction right now. Ooh. Stunner style. He's going in the wrong way. He's going north instead of west. <laughs> <clears throat> so unfortunately, we're not going to have him in the studio, aka slash party van, party van. You like our new one? You like oh, our new great decor? In here. I love the lights. I like the disco lights. I personally. love mm-hmm. the disco lights. The lasers. And uh, but we are going to be joined in the illustrious studio by uh, Mr. James Bean, man on the scene and man on the scene right here in this town today. Flew in special for uh, tomorrow night's uh, ethos Ooh. testing, tasting, testing. Right out of the gate, we got calls coming in. You know, there's going to be either four twenty. Because he knows. What's up, guys? Yo, yo. Hey, what's up? What's going on? I think good, good. I'm, uh, didn't mean to call too early. But yeah, you know, of, fucking Rhode Island guys. They don't know. Yeah. They, they can't. They can't tell time. That we know that. Everybody no. knows that. Um, no, we really can't. Well, I'm doing my. Um, let me just do my intros. You can, you can, you, you can either hang in there, no, no problem, uh, or you can just give me a call back in like ten or so. That may be better. I'll call you back. Yeah, I'll just. I didn't want to call you back right away, so I yeah, can call, call you back and what. Or something. That's all right, all right Mario. I didn't even get to. I didn't even get to announce you can be on the show yet. That's how quick you are. I was like, I was just starting with James, and then. Dude. Okay. Anyway, call yeah. me back. In, call me back in about ten fifteen. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Well, bye. Listen for us. We'll call. We'll call you. How's that? All right. Great. Just great. just as a shout out, you call me. And then you call me. You actually have to physically call though. So we'll, we'll tell you on the show. So just keep your ears open. All right. All right, brother. Thank you, bro. So uh, we have JJ, top dog JJ, supposedly coming. I have right now after Duke canceled, we have no idea. This is like you know, a bunch of breeders saying they're going to show up. Doesn't always work that way, but hopefully we'll have JJ in the studio. Hopefully one of them will show up. You know? Yeah, you know. But we have it doesn't matter. We have Mario calling in right uh, from Diva Lighting, and we're going to have Wolf calling in, and we're going to have a big discussion on lighting. And all the advancements with ceramic metal halides. And, you know, Wolf is like, you know, he's a pho- photonologist, I think is what technically. Photon? I don't even remember. Is that he, like the stand up grow so, thing? No. All oh, right, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> so we have Wolf calling in. Um, we also got Ginger Dewar calling in. I think she's in Chicago right now. And uh, just going to have a big round. Round t- imaginary round table because it's absolutely right, right now we're sitting in front of a bunch of stacked up boxes in the back of a party van that looks very good. I mean, you, you did a great job of making a something out of nothing here. I'm impressed. Uh, but this is the last week that we're going to be locked out of our new facility because <laughs> right, right now we're like looking at it and we can see it still full of cars, still full of alarms going off <laughs> if we do a bunch of dabs in there. So, yeah, we don't want I've that. had a discussion with the owner. Guaranteed next week when everybody shows up, it will be fine. Because that's nice. uh, that would be crazy, right? So <clears throat> that's going to be taken care of. But this is a this is the last week. But this is cool. This is a uh, donated by a friend of mine, so it's very very uh, thoughtful. Because at the same time, it's windy as fuck out right now. And if we did the show like we did last week, it'd be a bunch of cold dudes yeah. watching a oh. bunch of guys who are <laughs> in the car would be rocking. Two guys in the car, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because it's been gusting sh- fucking crazy out here. Mm-hmm. Um, let's do some quick shout-outs before everybody starts calling in. Uh, they're probably going to interrupt us anyway, but we'll see if we can do it. Uh, right out of the gate, New Millennium, who need to come on the show real soon because uh, we, we had the confirmation from Neil yeah, himself. May, May. We, May. I talked with Neil. And, and May as in the May. month or May as he may show up? 
Oh no, May is yeah. <laughs> beginning of May. May or nay? Oh, right. He had some stuff going on, but uh, he he said that would work best. Well, right. I look forward to that because uh, great products. Been using them now for three years or so, and it's like uh, e- easy to use, but also you know you're in control, which is great. And it's also guys who've been in the industry a long, long time, and they kind of you know they, they they know where there's a lot of bullshit going on, and they they've eliminated all that, which I love. And you can go to newmillenniumnutrients.com. Check out their website. They got a store finder, things like that, which are important because it's still very hard to find because it's uh, it's one of those products which it's not in every <laughs> single shop. It's not like GH and Botanicare and products like that that have been out for a long time and are have have slowly seemed to water down their formula to the point where you're like, this is not the same thing I used to have back in the day. <clears throat> These guys are fresh out of the gate from here in Colorado. All their products are super stable and just you know, great to work with. Also for larger scale operations, these things are great too. That's one thing. Um, you know, it's nice to know that this they can handle any scale, which is important because now we're all like, what? 60 lights? Pfft, that's nothing. You know what I mean? Like, Just a little personal grow? Yeah, Percy. Yeah. It's Percy, bro. Percy, bro. Exactly. <laughs> um, and, of course, our buddies over at Incredibles who also have a party van, which is not quite as nice as this one, but pretty dope also so maybe we'll get we were originally planning that was the whole this is the reason we even came up with this thing originally because we're like yes bring the party and then it didn't start up so it hadn't run in a while but one thing that does run over there is 24 7 hash making and uh making some of the best edibles here in colorado and now fucking getting everywhere popping up all over um all over the country and uh consistency is the key to this the, all their stuff that's what I love about them so super consistent in both hash and uh, because it's all their own product and that's that is again if you're going to be doing anything in this world do it yourself you know and that's these guys all the way from the ground up and the so machines you, are theirs even the machines you know I mean yeah, mm-hmm. covered all bases we, we you know they, they, they grow the weed they build the machine they grow the cannabis so it's like that you know process them themselves in house and that's the way to do it. So you go to iloveincredibles.com, check out their website, really easy to uh, navigate. Got all sorts of products, wellness products. Uh, they're medicated microdosing kind of products, which are great because they're minty and nice, and you can have them all day instead of being like zonked out because you, you forgot. You could literally eat the whole thing and you'd be fine. I guarantee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a promise. That's an Adam, Adam back Adam, guarantee. Adam Dunn promise there. Yeah, yeah I, I would be pretty, pretty. Disappointed in you if you got wigged out on a microdosed amount of Incredibles. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, also, next on the agenda, Mr. Bill to soil himself. Jeremy, I just talked to him on the phone today. Uh, we both obviously realized we, we need to get on, but now now we're getting all busy, both of us in our, in our ways. But hopefully we'll have him on the show soon. If you uh, have any kind of IPM issues you want to take care of, which you should be taking care of now before they become, you got to take care of those things before. That's the whole point. Have of a healthy that, plant. That is the whole point of IPM, right? Um, so, and I knew it. I knew he could never get to the end. Can be Wolfie. No. Abnormal. Hey, hey Wolfster. How you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Good. I got like two more uh, ads to do, so just kind of hang in there for a second, and then uh, Mario's going to call in because he already checked in, and I told him give me, give me ten minutes, and that was about you know seven minutes ago. No problem. <laughs> so hang in there, Wolfie. Uh, okay. I'm just hyping up uh, Jeremy from Build a Soil right now, which is not you know don't even have to do it because everybody already knows the guy's one of the most. Uh, I've got you guys calling in to me apparently, so I'll answer it. N- who's that? No, mm-hmm. no, you don't. No, you don't. Nope. Nine seven zero four one seven zero nine nine two. Nope, not, not us, not us. <laughs> we, huh. Are, huh? No, it's not us. So anyway, you know Jeremy, right? Build this way. Just, just uh, it's probably yeah. Could be. We, we talked yeah. a little bit ago. <laughs> I mean, like I'm just yeah, like I'm saying, it's kind of like the you know, yeah. he's he's the kind of guy who is so rock solid in the industry because his products are just you know the most. He, he, right. He, he yeah. works with the best products out there, so. You can't really you can't really go wrong. Um, and he actively searches for he's he's not like some people who sit on their butt going oh well I've got the best and then they stop looking to see if they can improve it. He's always yeah. looking to improve his processes. Sure, and also um, you know it's just like you can always just tell when you talk to somebody you hear the passion and when you meet them you realize like okay this guy lives and breathes this so it's it's uh, it's what you want to do. I mean it's kind of the whole point of this industry is. 
authenticity in my in my opinion you know the people that are authentic are the people who are you know going with the highs and the lows and dealing with it and they've already you know been through their been through their situations and you know nowadays it's people kind of think it's easy but as we all know it all starts in the soil and it all starts with the basics and it all starts with kind of you know fundamentals and that's how we try to that's how we try to uh, promote it that's a, and that's the thing i think about building soil is like all their stuff uh he can also do some you know great shipping deals if you're here in colorado or if you're in new mexico um all because because that's one of the things here it's like he's on the he, he's not in the easiest to get to spot and uh a lot of people go for convenience when it comes to uh growing they're like well, whatever's the closest grow shop but you won't find any of these things in a normal grow shop so that's where it's like it's a kind of one-stop one-stop shop um so it's buildasoil.com and also if you want to call like old school <laughs> Like, like kind of, I'm sure Wolf likes to do, just call people. It's 855-877-SOIL and uh, tell them we sent you. I don't know. Like, we have any kind of codes. That we, we never pay attention. We're, we're the worst code generators in the business. That's, <laughs> so it all stops. at this. like, huh? If you set them up, I'll remember them and tell you. Yeah, exactly. But I think we haven't really discussed it. But I'll talk to Jeremy again after the show, and we'll, uh, we'll update it to something new. But pretty much, I think with him... Just tell them we sent you. That's how it all works with that, those guys. Uh, speaking of sending you, send you right over to Mr. Ron Wallace. This is it. This is your moment to shine, kid. Oh, Wallace, wow. <laughs> dot com. Don't forget. Go to dot com, program, yeah. Right? Thank you. You're, this is your only job. This He's is probably all got all the domains. No, no, I don't know if he does. I don't know if he does. Whoa, that's some stuff on Wolf's side, I think. Uh, but Mr. Ron Wallace is a world record pumpkin grower and now uh, also cannabis enthusiast, which helps uh, helps growers like us develop and you know put out the best we can. And again, it all starts in the roots, and that's kind of in the root in the rhizosphere. And this is the time of year, guys like him and kind of guys like us are all starting to look at you know what we got to do. We got to prepare for the for the next year and. Uh, He's a great guy to go to if you want to do it. If you need mycorrhizals, that's his number one products, but he's also got a whole list of others. So you go to wallacewild.com. Wallacewild.com. Uh, thank you. Okay, I'm just <laughs> now I'm learning. I'm learning. It took me only a year and a half or something like that. Uh, and you can also uh, reach out to Ron and just tell him again that you came through us. And uh, he's been noticing a lot of spikes in his uh, in his people coming from the show he did tell me without any codes just because old school mm-hmm. i think he might have given me a code too and then it's like yeah i got you and i forgot <laughs> uh, you know that's why they just keep forgot it ads it. ads forgot 420 it. one of those i'll variations. have to go through all my stuff and pass it on to you guys since oh. you're the you're the brains of the of the of the crew obviously um and last but not least and this would be the perfect moment for him to walk in and be like hey guys i'm here but for some reason he's lost Lost in his rented car. He probably rented like the smallest car possible and got blown off the road or something. So, who knows? Who knows? But Mr. James Bean from SeedsHereNow.com, where are you? Where are you? Get in here. I know where the seeds are. The seeds get here. The seeds will get to you faster than he will from the airport. I hope that's that. That is the key. Like, if, <laughs> but but no, they will, and uh, they're guaranteed also. And it's uh, that time of year if you're. An outdoor grower, and it's you know, that time of year, even if you're any grower, I think springtime is just weird. Your indoor plants look better, your seeds, everything goes better because things are in, in line and ready ready for it. So if you weren't planning on growing seeds, maybe you should. And if you do, you should contact seedsherenow.com. They got 35 breeders, uh, all uh, U.S.-based and well-vetted. So, you know, Duke Diamond's vault right there. We could be talking about it with those two guys. It should be, they should both be here right now. You can just leave it up on the screensaver, I think. That'll be fine. And that's, uh, you know, this is their moment to shine. We could have had the diamonds flowing. You know, diamonds. Ah, well, was, could, have been, could, have been a, could have been a hit. But anyway, you can contact them at cznow.com or go to Cedaholics if you want to check out their um, auction sites and shit like that because that's also... Very cool. Uh, and Treasure. Treasure. Uh, uh, if you go to Barcelona right now and you want to check out um, a club and you want to get in for free because it's like you got to pay money to be a member, we can go to these guys, tell them you're from the Adam Dunn show, and he'll, I guess, charge you the minimum, whatever it is, just to be legal. But besides that, 
And I see a truck kind of pulling up behind us, so maybe that's a... Is that right there? Yeah, I see a that behind us in the reflection. Oh, you're the reflection. You're working... It's working, got the ladders on top. You're working... Ref- oh, ladders on top is mm. definitely not going to be James from Seeds Here Now. No, it's definitely not James. No, no, no. Nope. So, uh, if yeah. we... Uh, yeah, he's like, hey, what the heck's going on over here? Uh, James, if you're close. So, yeah, Treasure is just... Check him out online uh, on Facebook. T E R S O R, not treasure, but treasure. And it is the same word. But our buddies over there uh, have offered free membership to anybody who comes in from Adam Dunn Show. So you might want to jump on that if you're in Barcelona. Thank you very much. So, all right, Mr. Wolfie. So we got you on the, on here. And then I'm sure Mario, who's already like, was Johnny on the spot. Before I ever even said his name, he called. So that was that was a little too quick. Now he can call in, and we can get on to this light discussion that we were going to start the whole show about, which is uh, something that you're basically like. A, you have a PhD, or you have a, what, what is what is you, you definitely are like focused. Oh, focusing sounds so contrived. <laughs> focusing on lighting and uh, as like your masters or. Tell me a little bit about your back, because I never really asked you about anything about that. I just assume you're, I, I always think of you as farmer in the sky, but. T- well, um, I am essentially self-educated. Uh, I started, I started growing in 71 and <laughs> grew my first plants under lights in 75. And I'm uh, the kind of person who OCDs on um, learning I stuff and I, I get tunnel vision. Oh, yeah, I totally see that. So uh, it just, I, I, you know, started looking at it and started wondering and started playing and started reading about what the rules of light were and started experimenting. And, of course, the first obvious one was, hey, there's 18 or 20 inches at the top of this plant that are getting lots and lots of light, and the rest of it's not. Huh. And that's kind of what led to Sea of Green was, well, why am I growing all of this junk down here Mm-hmm. and not the good parts that are just the end. And that led to, oh, inverse square law. You mean there's some stuff called physics? Holy shit, let's learn about this. Mm-hmm. And um, basically started digging into it, started learning about the different kinds of light. And at the same time this is all going on, I'm going into the indoor sun shop up in Seattle and into Hydrotech up in Seattle and learning more and more about growing under lights and looking at lights, um, at that point, when I first started, the first plants I grew under lights were grown under very high output fluorescence, and that was a lot of fun, but um, one day I'm standing in Steve Murphy, Murphy Stevens is what he wrote as, but Steve Murphy's shop, the indoor sun shop in Seattle, and an engineering student comes in and says, why do you guys use fluorescent lights? There's a kind of light called a high-intensity discharge light that's a much more efficient way to use electricity. Uh, Steve looked at his guy that was working for him, Herbie, and there was another guy that was working there with him, and we all kind of looked at each other, and I didn't really register with me, but about a year later, Steve comes out with how to grow the finest marijuana indoors under lights, which was about growing under HIDs. That sort of... There were people stealing street lights before then, but that was pretty much where people growing under HIDs indoors really caught on. Right. Jumped from there down to California and then back up to George up in um, Portland. And by then we had probably four or five shops that were selling, that were uh, cannabis centered, although of course none of them admitted that at the time uh, in the Seattle area. And it just sort of expanded out like someone threw a big rock in a still pond. I think we got Mario on the line now. Or not. Or do we have no, this is Drew. Oh. oh, Drew. What's going on? What's up, man? Not much. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I was good. I was hoping Mario was on here. I was calling to troll him. Oh, well, yes. Yeah, so you <laughs> pre-trolled him. He he called in early, then he faded off because I told him to call back, and now you pre-trolled him. So, damn. That's, oh, jeez. Jeez. It's like Which Drew? Drew Greco? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, first time we've ever talked. Hi, it's Wolf. Oh, what's up, man? How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. You guys are 
you guys are freaking rocking it. Every picture I see on Facebook, it's like, <laughs> damn, you know? Thank you, man. So good work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We're just trying to keep up right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, the, that's, the, uh, that. that's the cannabis curse right there, right? It's like it's always uh, yeah. It's always fun until you start to get into the actual, like, keeping, taking care of a lot of people. And then, you know, back in the day, you didn't really have that. It wasn't a job as much. It was always a job, but it was kind of like a, a job you could pick and choose. And now you're like, fuck. You know, no. Yeah, they'll, exactly. They'll I be, mean, it was nice when you could go in the garden and work by yourself and get everything done in 40 hours. And now it takes 18 people and 60 hours a week. <laughs> right. We got so much stuff going on. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I, I was fortunate. It's, fun, it's still fun. Uh, I, I was fortunate. Back in those days, I was running pretty good size. And um, you wouldn't think it to look at the old fart I am now, but there was a time that uh, I was buff and had a good mouthpiece on me. So I just got women involved in growing. And my my daily cycle was wake up in whatever house I was in, okay, work can, with the lady to get. I think we got Mar- I, I think we got I think we got Mario calling in. So Drew, you can just you can just lay and wait lay and wait for a while if you like, and then you can just nail him. Nice. Yo yo, welcome to the Adam Dunn Show. Hello, it's Ginger Doer. How are you guys? Oh, Ginger, how's it going? Hey, Ginger. Ginger. Good. <laughs> so What's he's up? he. Yeah, we were. We, we thought you might. Now Mario's last to the to the table, to the last one to the table. So yeah, Mario's experiencing some extreme technical difficulties. Apparently, his phone and his laptop hate him. Right. <laughs> Mario, Mario's slow to everything. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Mario's the attack out of kindness. So, so Ginger, we were just uh, right. we were starting off with Wolf, kind of introducing the whole lighting. He's going through the history a little bit. Um, you know, mm-hmm. as, as we all know, we're kind of in a. I, I'd say we're in a lighting renaissance right now, just because of all the ceramic metal halides and the and the better. Oh, I definitely agree. There's some seriously interesting things coming onto the market now, or at least coming over finally into the cannabis realm. But uh, but before we get all into that, I wanted to kind of continue where we left off, which was like back back when people first started to uh, realize that fluorescents weren't the thing and they had moved on for you know went from regular fluorescence to the vhos and the vhos to the hids and the hids were not the most efficient in the beginning but at the same time uh you know people were just literally taking street lights as we all know <laughs> like and that was the kind of the, yeah. the, the easiest route and then uh home depot tent <laughs> yeah, now, I mean, the crazy part is that there, there, there was no Home Depot yet then. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, it was, that's how long ago it was. <laughs> well, yeah, and on top I of I don't it, know anything about that. Granger. <laughs> Granger yeah. Industrial Supply. If you didn't want to go in a grow shop, you, you, you got a business license and you bought your stuff from Granger. Sure. And they're still in business. Wow. They're still rolling hard. Um, yeah, you know, the thing is now it's weird because you can get a lot of these, you know, it's starting to happen where Walmart's, especially Walmart online, you can get, I think there was over 1,300 products last year. I'm sure there's like 2,000 now. And, uh, you know, when when uh, when I left America for the first time was around 89, and there was a couple grow shops on the East Coast, but there was like Worms Away. There was a couple Worms Ways, one in Ohio, I think, or there was like, like three, yep. three in the whole country or something, you know, and and that catalog was like gold, you know what I mean? That was the shit you'd look at and would drool, like, oh, man, if we could have that. You know, no matter where you lived, you didn't live near Worm's Way unless you were in that one zone, you know, for the most part. And if you went in there, it was like a dream. And then if you were on the West Coast, there was a couple cool shops. And there was a bunch of weird ones that were like, you know, mismanaged and strange and probably just a bunch of cops standing around taking info. And it seemed like, you know, you walked in, you were like, this is definitely not a real shop. Something's <laughs> weird, you know. Um <laughs> But in the beginning, uh, what you were talking about, Wolf, uh, continue from that point on, like about the uh, the time period when you, when we started. Okay, with- so people start growing indoors. We, we made the switch from fluorescence into HIDs. But HID grown, indoor grown plants, still pretty much everyone that's serious about growing is like, well, indoor is pretty, and it smells nice, and it looks good, and it tastes nice, but it's no high. And what I've been thinking about a lot, trying to figure out what the transition was, is that in those days, we really made a big difference between getting stoned and getting high. 
you know, couch lock, sedative, narcotic, nowadays people calling it an indica high, really just to kind of get wasted and be stupid high, versus a cerebral, be creative, make music, do art, come up with stuff, and sit on the couch and do nothing except have these great three and a half, four hour conversations about do you suppose that the whole universe is really the inside of an atom? I mean, some of course, figures. of course, I mean, that was it a is. very common conversation. Of course, it is. What are you talking about? You know, you, you know, I wouldn't even argue with that for a second, right? That's like so unarguable. Um, yeah, yeah, no, but I think, that was pretty much a yeah. distinction we made. Um, and someplace along the line, we found a few other kinds of lights. We found the um, the Optimark from Luxor, a uh, company that Osram bought up. Luxor made something called the Optimark that I'm pretty sure was a very early version of the ceramic arc tube. Um, but someone told me that actually it wasn't, that it was a... Uh, it was a conventional quartz, but with um, a lithium mix in it. So it, it was much bluer, much brighter. Uh, we, we had a, a high-pressure sodium, like the new Hortolux ceramic high-pressure sodiums. I look at the, at the charts for it, and it looks almost identical to a, a bulb that uh, GE of England, GEC, made um, that was called the Ceramolux 4. Uh, 1986 or 87... We've started finding about, out about LEDs. So, Kevin Bjornson, the other part, the other main part of Farmer in the Sky, and I wrote an article speculating on the use of LEDs in cannabiculture, a phrase we later coined. But, um, and now here it is, what, 30 some years later, and it is coming up, and LED technology, there's three or four different LED technologies, and they're all coming on strong. So, um, Light keeps evolving. Light's that spark plug, and everything else is the fuel except the genetics. So if you get the light right, you drive the rest of the process. Then yeah, um, sure. about 1987, I'm looking through a pamphlet uh, that comes from a wholesaler, a, a lighting wholesaler down in L.A. I forget their name, but it's got a picture of this bulb. At that point, what we, we started out growing just under halides. Someone figured out, hey, add sodiums during flower. Uh, then we found out, or, or replaced halides with sodiums. Then we figure out that, oh, look, you don't necessarily want to replace them. You want to add them, better spectrum. Um, we start playing with that. I start playing with side lighting. Um, what do they call it now? Oh, intracanopy lighting. Now, what do you think um, about what do you think about that overall? Because I've always been like, really, if, like I tried every angle and thought all the, but every time I did that, I felt like it, it took away from the, it made the plant like get kind of weird. Like it didn't like like it didn't help the overall weight. It always stayed the same, and it just kind of shifted everything in a different direction. And it was kind of like, well, huh, okay, I, yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't a huge help if 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 they were if if you put your um, your side lights a little higher so they're not shining just in straight or up, then you still got the, the phototropic effect where the plant is still trying to reach up and grow and reach out. But if it was too much to the side or down a little, mm -hmm. you didn't really get that much. Um, what's happened, and, and I will give, as many people know, I'm not terribly fond of 1,000-watt lights, but I will give them their due when when you put a zillion of them up high mm -hmm. you're filling every freaking angle that you can get is penetrating and that's the advantage to outdoors is that you do have that lateral penetration coming into the canopy and and having having a zillion lights having a sea of light over your sea of green mm -hmm. is a great way to go what i don't like about the thousands for doing it is that you have four or five feet of space you have to fill with light energy before it gets to the top of the canopy. So I, I like, you know, make up for the difference, have more of them lower, get the penetration, and, and use less electricity in the process because 195 trees is what it takes to scrub up after 1,000 watts of light. Mm -hmm. For how long? An hour is an hour. Oh, Literally, one. while you burn a thousand watt light, for while hour. it's burning, one hundred ninety five trees are cleaning up okay. what it's producing in CO two. 
Damn. Yeah, that's crazy. Here's the wow. dollar in Mark. And uh, we got Mario on the line now, coming in. I think we do. Or we got... Uh, welcome to the I'm Done Show. Who we got? Hey, my name's uh, Nelson. I'm having a hard time watching the show. I can't seem to view it, so I thought I'd give a call to see what I'm doing wrong. Can't seem to view it. You got any other people saying they can't view it? I tried on Facebook, and it gave me an error of 404. Mm. Uh-oh. YouTube.com forward slash Adam Dunn Show. And there'll be in a little event, and you can click on it, uh, and it should be good to go. Yeah, we're live right now. Huh. Yeah, everyone else is watching. Don't go to Facebook. Facebook is um, very... Yeah. Yesterday, you know, after the whole Cambridge Analytica <laughs> yeah. thing, you know, we're Can't just... Can't go through them anymore. No, yeah, so... So, Ginger, what you, what, what, right, you, what, cool. you, what you doing up there? Yeah, sorry about that. I, yeah, it does... We got, we got it on live, so it's... Uh, yeah, just go good. back to YouTube... Uh, re- reload. You should be fine. Uh, Ginger, what, right, you, cool. what you doing up there in Chicago? Uh, thank you, no problem. What you doing up there in mm. Chicago? Are you in Chicago right now? Is that what you say? I am, I am in Chicago oh, right now. I am house shopping. Thing. What do you, house you shopping say? House I'm shopping or couch shopping? <laughs> couch, couch shopping, yeah. of course. I mean, come on. No, not couch shopping. I don't come after if it's not a house. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Can I couch so surf in your new house? <laughs> you may, anytime. I have an open door Thank policy. You. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm up here so much with other business, um, with other business ventures with some of the ancillaries that I'm involved in that I wind up in hotels, like a ridiculous sum. So we just decided to buy something so I don't have to pack my damn shampoo all the time. Right, it's a lot right. easier. Yeah, sometimes, right? <laughs> just... Keep it just a place to keep my shampoo. At. That's pretty much what it comes down to. I'm paying, I'm paying rent. I'm paying rent for that bottle of shampoo to have it waiting, waiting in a familiar, in a familiar shop. A place to keep the beard balm. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's places like that everywhere. That that's literally what they end up being. Is like uh, the guys. Or, you know, if you if, if you keep it like you have it in fucking. Oh, you know, I've had it in rent control or whatever. And at a certain point, just got to keep it right. You know. And, it's like uh, end of the day nobody's using it and it's just like maybe for the same thing bottle shampoo or a bong usually a bong it's like a place to have a bong and a couch and to be able to go in do a bong <laughs> and be like yes this is worth all the money I've paid for the fucking month I guess you know just to have that one spot downtown that you can come roll in with your I, friends I agree you know there's, there's been plenty of places it's like a chihuahua too same thing it's like you know they, they own the they, they run the house so they, the dogs like that they uh yeah. mm. People own the whole thing for them, you know. It's like, like really, this dog owns everything. Like, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. pretty much, yes. Uh, so, so, uh, no, that, so my dog would agree with you. They own the whole thing. Of course, so of theirs. course. So you are up there doing work right now, or are you just kind of doing both, or a little of both? Yeah, I'm doing some work. I'm making some money moves. Right. Making money moves. We're uh, releasing a new product line at Angel Expo in San Francisco coming up. So I'm trying to, I'm in crunch time with that. Oh, yes. Um, getting all of our labeling proper and all those lovely things and all the stuff, you know, I don't exactly plan ahead well. So last minute trade show displays and last minute swag and. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's so. it's been, uh, been known to happen around, around here too. So I, I, to- <laughs> yeah. I totally understand what you're talking about. And uh, it's usually. Wait, you mean it's been two weeks? That, yeah, two weeks is like way ahead. You know, you're like you're you're killing it. I, I have an event. I have an event next week, and I, I literally just just hit up everybody the other day uh, for everything, and they were just like, "Man, you're lucky we've done this before, because otherwise they wouldn't be even thinking about it." Yo, yo, yo! We got you on the line, Mr. Mario. Finally, or what? What's up, guys? Uh, yeah, I'm on the road, and uh, <laughs> I'm having issues with the uh, with my Bluetooth on the podcast right now. Yeah. So I can't really. Um, I'm, I'm not on. I'm not on the air right now. Well, not in the podcast. Yeah. Well, you're on the so, air here, so you don't. Doesn't matter about that. Yeah, you're on the air. You oh, don't. Excellent. You don't want to be um, on that. You don't want to be on the air there. You want to be on the air here. You know, that, you, you, if you can hear yourself, then you're not doing good. So uh, just hang in there and uh, yeah. don't, don't crash. How's that? Um, All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. So we got Wolf and we got Ginger. We got you and we got Drew. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. We got. 
Who's that? Who's ruined it. Ah, uh, fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up. We got. Oh, about to start talking shit about him too. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I blew it. I, I Ninja, how's the wind over there? Where are you? Chicago. I am. Yeah, I'm in Chicago. I'm actually up in Lake Forest right now. Uh, oh. I bet it's I'm windier finally. in Denver right now than it is in Chicago. It's fucking windy right now. I don't we? know. It's whipping up. I was just, I was just on the lake, like at the shore of the lake, and it's six, seven foot water out there. Easy. That wind is brutal right now. Damn. So. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm over in the Adams Old Hood. I'm over by North Kingstown right now. Oh, really? So. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, dude. Down the post okay, road, baby. Down the post road over there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> just cross it up. Any anywhere you are, you're gonna end up there. So it's gonna happen. It's only one main, one main drag in that mm-hmm. spot. Uh, so, no, no. so, uh, Mari, we were talking to, in the beginning. I was talking with Wolf about lighting, a little history lesson, and uh, I mean, thing is that th- this this discussion can go really quickly to, you know, literally, you know, almost. Uh, next level like to, to the point where we're like wait a minute we're not even talking about the same thing anymore because i know how fast I, oh, no I, I, I know there's some big changes on the on the horizon but before we get to those ones i wanted to discuss with the because it's weird because we haven't really had this for a while we've had a, it's been fucking stagnant for the hell of a long time like we biggest change we had was electronic ballast for uh, at one point and then uh, besides that, what, you know, and then being able to change the voltage, and, and then all of a sudden we got to ceramics, and we got to a few things that were like, okay, these are these are now we're getting somewhere. Um, but yeah. the, but then with uh, but when it comes to pulling, you know, like guaranteed weights and stuff, there's some real limitations in America with the lighting, like the actual bulbs and stuff. Whereas in Europe we had kind of like full reign with what they were like, especially because Philips pretty much makes the best bulbs in the world, and I can't really think of anybody that's going to disagree without with without a doubt. I mean, there's, in a yep. In in the old school way, and and they're maybe going to keep up, but at the same time, that in the old, for the longest time for that stretch when I was using them the most, and most book growers were, and it was like no choice out there, and you know when it came down yeah. to it, bulb wise. Made or, it can make or break you because I mean that's the whole thing. That's what runs your garden. Is that that that's your driving force? And a lot of people are it's cheap about. Most, I don't know. A lot of people are super cheap and they're just like, just run whatever they get and they don't care. We you know? won't name any uh, super cheap lighting manufacturers, but yeah, there is there's a plethora of those. And yeah, you know, coming from retail, you know. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people don't. There's some huge failure wow. rates. There's a lot of failure rates on a lot of these products that are just not yeah. accept, not acceptable. You know what I mean? Like thirty percent. Some you know, and you're like, what? You know, it's just like, oh yeah, very batch oriented. Um, it's it's just a such a besides genetics and environment, it's the most important thing really when it comes down to it. The light that you're using to feed your plant, you know, photosynthesized, and it's you know, I've seen guys consulting gigs where they've had. Uh, you know, 600 watt metal halides really pushing them on magnetics with and the on open bat wings, and none of these are rated for open fixtures. So I'd be like, guys, you know, you really gotta, we gotta get this straightened out for you because you know you, these aren't O rated. You know, you're you're putting yourself and your and your plants in danger. You know, mm-hmm. and using really cheap knockoff lamps. You know, so right. that's the kind of what Wolf and I do. We want we try we try to get people. He's like the father of it. You know. So trying to get people um, set up the right way and correctly, at least when it comes to their layouts and their lights for their rooms, you know, that's 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 like our thing. I mean, it's my thing now at this point, you know, and what you're saying, all of that makes sense, you know. So we got our new uh, our new uh, uh, halide lamp there, the double ended one. That spectrum that we're producing off that, beautiful and has a huge green spike and that a lot of that has to do with what wolf's been researching and uh you know the importance of green uh within the pod spectrum on cannabis plants can you tell us a little bit about that wolf yeah um what's happened is for a very 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 long time it was believed that plants didn't absorb a whole lot of green and that what we were seeing was the green bouncing off of them that they weren't you know, they weren't absorbing. Well, it turns out that, yeah, we are seeing the green bouncing off of them that they're absorbing, but there's more green 
than anything else except red in either par or if you expand it out into p bar which is photo which is photobiologically active radiation it's um, where par is 400 to 700 nanometers in wavelength p bar is 280 nanometers to 780 nanometers the american society of agricultural and biological engineers is looking at taking p bar and there's there's too heavy an investment in par to get rid of par but they're looking at making a point of including p bar on all lighting package because everything between 280 and 780 e depending on the plant type has the potential to be beneficial and the best way we can think of um the green and i it's i i have to kind of circle in on it because it takes a second to get to why but um Basically, it's like music. If you're playing parts of a song too loud, some of the notes of the song too loud, then it throws the whole harmony off. If you're missing notes, it throws the harmony off. Well, you have to have the harmonic wavelengths in light, just like you do in music. Otherwise, it sounds as shitty, because plants are really radioing light. They're not seeing light. They're, they're absorbing electrons at a certain rate. And if you don't have the relative amplitudes, the strength at the different wavelengths correctly in proportion to each other, what happens is it doesn't absorb as efficiently. It's like having a radio that's tuned 0.1 on the dial off. And anyone can sit there. And it's the exact same thing. The physics are the same. If you sit there with your radio... Yeah and it's set at 0.1 off, you can hear the sound. Uh, sure. You can make out what's going on, and you turn it up in order to be able to hear it, but it sounds really shitty. Yeah. That's, a, that's a poorly tuned light. Gotcha. Why mm-hmm. CMH works so well is it's providing more of it. Now, it turns out that there are also chords and harmonics in light. Luminal chords, luminal meaning having to do with light, mm-hmm. luminal harmonics, and the same thing that happens when you play the correct notes of music together, where the energy that's there mm-hmm. is available for longer because it, what it needs to support it, the, the harmony it needs to, provide, to keep that energy resonating in the air, vibrating, mm-hmm. is what happens with light. Yeah. What's happened, going all the way back, is that we have this misunderstanding of photosynthesis. The mainstream orthodox photobiologists believe that a plant absorbs 8 to 10 uh, protons from the photons Mm -hmm. and then photosynthesis. And and the way, the the simplest words, the simplest non-math way to describe it is that it's capacitatively sequential. It builds up a charge and then it discharges that charge. And that discharge of charge is the bump that makes photosynthesis happen. Mm. But if the, if the light is properly tuned, you don't have that pause. So because it's continual, mm. you get more. It's not starting and stopping, albeit in like billions of a second type yeah. intervals. We, but yeah. you end up with the, correct, with the correct chords. You get way more work from the same amount of energy. Yeah, you do, and, and that's why and, we're really liking the results with this new lamp, this new double-ended halide uh, with that green spike in it. And I noticed a lot of guys are using this lamp throughout the whole, the entire plant cycle. I mean, it's a thousand watt lamp. I mean, but you know, anything like that, you can't really dim a, a, a halide lamp because of the arc tube, right? Well, you can't really. You shouldn't. Right. Be it, it just it's. Yeah, if you're going to do that, if you have a dimmable fixture, uh, then instead of instead of dimming a thousand water, I mean old st- old style ballast, if you're going to dim it, put it on six hundred and put a six hundred watt bulb in it, not yeah, dim a thousand. Like the Horlock six hundred yeah. watt daylight blue metal halide. That that lamp, the spectrum on that lamp, really that was that was groundbreaking. There was a point where. That lamp, if we could only pick one lamp to, to go with, that would be the one, that the 600-watt Hortolux Daylight Blue. And what we did with this new uh, double-ended halide, we kind of 
took that to the next level and just we have a big green spike in it, which falls. Where's the green fall, Wolf? Within within five, uh, up 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 in five, up in uh, the middle, five five fifty five five eighty yeah. right in there. Five, and what this does in in terms of the, of how it affects the plant, a uh, a plant's stoma, the the pores that it breathes through, and mm-hmm. where the chloroplasts, the things that absorb light, are in. If it gets too much far red, it closes them down. If it gets too much green by itself, it closes them down. But lo and behold, that sharp spike of green makes it so that it can convert more of the phytochrome at 620 to 660 and the 660 up to 730. So there's something called the Emerson effect. And what happens in the Emerson effect is that the more you drive the 730-660 reaction, the, the, the more the plant grows, the more photosynthesis can occur. And having that green spike makes the far red absor- far more absorbent. But then you need the blue. You need enough yeah. blue to keep the green and far red from closing the stoma down producing what's called photo inhibition, right? Like light inhibition. Yeah. So when you get it right, which is what you, you're fine tuning, it's going to be a little different for each variety, basically based on the latitude that they're, that their dominant ancestors are from and the altitude at that latitude that those dominant ancestors are from. Where, which yeah. of course is a great way to tie into this this new light that that Rev Micro, the people that Mario works for, are getting ready to come out with. Uh, they're they're bringing out the Avicii, which if I was growing thousand, if I was using one K lighting, I would look at. Really, there's three fixtures from those guys I like. I would I would run their Diva with an HPS, and I'd run the CM the the. the uh, quartz metal halide, the, the green, yeah. the, the green spike blue. And I would actually put up some of the Avicis, these new things, which are in my mind, the major game changer in LEDs. Yeah. Because they've got more, you know, more tunability than a $3,000 Helio Spectra, uh, yeah. and more power. So we're if I in. want to yeah. fine tune, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, we're coming in at, we're at the, for retail too, MSRP we're looking at eight ninety nine for retail, and that's not even getting into like once we start MOQ minimum order quantity. Once we start doing a lot at once, that price will decrease dramatically, and you're you're basically going to end up with an LED that you can fine tune any spectrum you'd like, all the way from twenty eight watts up to eleven fifty. And at full blast, it's it's actually brighter than a than a halide. It's it's horribly bright, as we'd like to say. Uh, we were peeling the paint off the walls with it in Vegas. It stops traffic. So it really is something else. So we, we, we came up with an LED that can compete with uh, double-ended um, fixtures now and double-ended. And, um, and, and, what's the cover- and in what's the places cover- like Matt. What's the coverage on that? Like in places five, like- five by five? Five or- by five, six by six, I'd say. Okay. You know, it's. It's, it's um, the, the actual dimensions of it, I, I can't recall off the top of my head, but, we, you know, I. I Five by five. Let's say five by five. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I, I think I read five by six, but that's yeah. Yeah, we could get a little more with it. Um, CSA has it right now. We're we're finishing that up. I need to get that up soon because a lot of guys are waiting for it. And basically, with that fixture, you 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 can uh you can fine tune that any spectrum you'd like. If you want it, if you want a three fifteen, if you want a six thirty, if you want to do a a thousand watt, um, mm-hmm. you, you'll be able to fine tune the spectrum. There will be presets on it too. For guys, you know, we'll have like um, early veg, flower, um, late late vet, you know, um, late flower, <laughs> harvest, whatever. <laughs> that is good. So it, the problem a lot of times I've seen, it, I've seen some fully adjustables, yeah. and the problem I think is that you give somebody too many options, and they're gonna fuck it all up. You know, just yeah, they're gonna go next to them. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. You, yeah, people like to get in there and do what they're doing, and they stop pushing buttons, and yeah. they, you know, they have yeah. just well, and, yeah. need to and the people. That. And the, the, the people who like to play mad scientist, right, who, who love to, to the, the pot geeks, my people, right, right. They, yeah. th- they want to fine tune what they're doing. And they're going to be able with these combinations of lights, you know, you wouldn't, you, you don't listen to recorded music 
on one one kind of speaker. In order to get all of the different wavelengths at yeah. just the right proportions, you've got different kinds of transducers giving you that light. I think of the Avicii as being a light that lets you fine-tune your spectrum to where you can actually end up with some signature characteristics. You might have four people growing the same cultivated variety, but because one person has really mastered what's going on, they've got a signature. Oh, yeah, that white widow is Bill's yeah, instead no of it just being generic. But also, there's, you know, you might have, depending on where you're from, where your plants are from, I should say, you can fine tune it to that. There's, there's, it's just so much fun. But the other, that's one of the two advantage, huge advantages to, to the Avicii. Uh, and one is the, the tunability, but on pricing, a lot, a lot of power companies are going to allow incentives, financial incentives for keeping your consumption below a certain point. And places like Massachusetts, they're passing laws that say you can't max out beyond a certain number of watts per square foot of production area. We, we're going to be, well, I, I got a lot of, um, um, facilities in mass interested in that and the 630 and of course the DE. So we're going to be, we're do, we're working on calculus. We're working on all that, getting these guys locked in. So they're following, you know, they, cause there's hair, what if, it goes by shares, right? Share one, two, three, four, five, um, amount of square feet, or per, grams per square feet or watts per square feet. Right. So we, we came up with the 630 to kind of counter that for guys that don't want to have the power of a thousand watts. They want a little less, and the 630 CMH on the ballast is going to be that 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 picture is going to be able to actually hang with a lot of DE thousand watt pictures. So I'm excited about that. And I'll be sure, Adam. I'm going to get you uh, one of the LEDs. You you also Wolf, um, and we'll, we'll we'll play around with them yeah, too. I'm look, I once I have them, I look forward. To, are you going to have the presets already, or are you going to be working on that at, at, out of the gate? Uh, <laughs> uh, Greg, <laughs> am I Greg finalizing them now. Another thing that's cool is, like, all our pictures are open source, so, like, mm -hmm. real tech geek guys that want to get into it and, like, oh, we're going to build a controller, you know, you, they have options like that, too. So we're kind of leaving it open, like an open canvas for, nice. for guys that want to get into that stuff. That sounds excellent. But and any, any control stuff. system that, works, that, that runs 0 to 10 volt will work on that, will work on that system. I'm not going to tell a novice that is not, you know, or not locked in with a cultivar to just that. Um, you know, fine tuning spectrums as they'd like. So I'm going to make sure that you know the educational awareness is important too. So sure, sure. I don't want to see anyone mess their stuff up. But but you know the price point too. I mean, you're getting twice the power of, of competitors, half and half the price. So I'm excited. We just yeah. You know, I mean, the LEDs are, they're 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 sliding into that zone where it's like okay, now it's becoming sort of affordable. Um, especially when you start to compare on like uh, you know bulb hours and there's details that instantly make you the oh okay you forgot about that you know it does last where you, mm -hmm. you throw away like six or eight bulbs by the time you throw it but you know that, but they haven't yeah, there are greater there, I think there are greater implications for how, for cost savings too from a long term perspective in hot weather environments because they give off so much less heat uh -huh. so if you're in say Wait first half of the Mason Dixon and you're struggling against, you know, offsetting those your your heat loads, you're gonna really reduce for about eight months of a year your utility bill because you're not gonna be you're not gonna need to run as many BTUs of heat offset. We we're also we, thinking about we got, that, we, got that, we got somebody joining us. Welcome to the Adam Dunshaw who we got what's going on? It's Herbert again <laughs> Fo twenty Wait. I went out and bought my popsicles <laughs> and my face. <laughs> yeah, how are you girls doing down there? Did you drop anybody on their head? Only one or two. One or two this time. That's good. That's a good. That's a good amount. So, uh, you uh, getting ready for the season? What are you? Always. Always. So, am I seeing you over the Adzi or what? You guys coming over to the? You going to be coming to compete? You want to focus? But lots of popsicles. <laughs> All right, four twenty. Tell me what. We, tell me what's up. 
Sorry, this is a, this is a, this is our so it's our serial so it's our, it's our that serial sounds, serial this so our serial. Twenty. Number. That sounds like a faux twenty. <laughs> it sounds like some kind of. I know. Some what do you got? Like, what is that? Faux twenty. It's like a forty-eight-year-old kid, is what it sounds like to me. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> try 50. I got a couple of years on you, buddy. Uh, um, right. no, I'm scared to say 50. Yeah. yeah 50 Actually, we're going to put together the old timers classic, bro, and the only 50, type, 50 years old and 20 years experience under the belt get in. So nice. I hope you can get old pretty quick. Uh, but anyway, we were just quick. calling to say hi. We're in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, you like that shit? Yeah, yeah. We're in Michigan just calling to say hi. I was going to do a night's and day. Take you back to some pie time, but maybe next time. So sorry to interrupt. It's okay. That was my, my du- my, that was my. I know. Cool. You do, yeah, that, that you, was my you, son doing Herbert, Herbert for you. You do you do an excellent job every time. All right, thanks, man. Talk to you soon. Uh, All right, every show. Adios. <laughs> Usually oh. he calls in before. Yeah, he's 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 on he's on point. He's he's doing his job. That's the thing. Yeah, there's, there's always got to be one, right? So, uh, mm-hmm. so uh, you were saying, Ginger, <laughs> about heat heat. It was oh. yeah. I mean, the whole thing is okay. when you grow in heat heat situations, you, you start to realize, especially in large. You know, you could do a couple hundred lights is a little different than growing ten or twenty lights in a place where because a lot of times their places are. We're, we're never built right back in the day. We were always like, I mean, literally like, no. di- you know, bu- putting things in just ridiculous situations. And now we're in the opposite. Now we're in places where you're just like, okay, either where they're, sometimes they're even custom built, but for the most part, they're like, mm-hmm. you know, way, way easier in one way because you're kind of like, t- you know, tuning, if you can tune it right. But it's also really hard if you're, you know, try to dumb it down and get to it's, work against, work against the clock. Was it? Yeah, it, it does require a lot more technical knowledge and know how to, to design a facility, a purpose built facility that where you can control the majority of your variables. But it's key well, to be able to do. I think that there are ways to. I think that the industry is moving toward a situation where we're going to have some straight out of the box solutions. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're there yet, but I think we're getting to the point. I think. Um, like some of the improvements we're seeing on the lighting side, what we're doing on plant nutrition and the agronomy side is essentially geared towards making it, for lack of a better term, idiot proof. Mm-hmm. Um, getting these better light spectrums, all of these things that we're, we're doing, a lot of the newer systems, like uh, bringing in Argus systems into larger facilities, all of the automation that we're able to bring in, it, it requires a lot of scientific and technical understanding um, and grasp of both environmental and plant biology fundamentals. But when you have these facilities built and you get them dialed in, then they they run extremely smoothly. So it's one of those situations where if you're really concerned about margins, and I think a lot of people should be less concerned about yields and more concerned about margins, um, then we're getting to that point where the people who who are able to build their facilities in a way where they've got a lot of automation and they're collecting analytics and they're doing these things are actually going to require lower uh, thresholds for acceptable labor force than a garden that isn't built um, as well. Yeah. I mean, well, you, right now it's like uh, the reality check for a lot of people because it's uh it's crazy when you see grows that you walk in and you're like, wait a minute, this is like 2011 or something like that. You know, like people haven't figured yeah. it out. Um, and they have to, because it's just like the, trans- the transition is just, is already there. You know, like if you're not, if you're not already thinking about growing with either D's or, you know, moving up to six thirties or three fifteens and some sort of usable fa- fa- but the problem is everybody gets like like all of a sudden they start double stacking and doing stupid shit and you're just like all right now it's totally, yeah. now it's not gonna work you know what I mean like the shit only works yeah. if like if you create like a you can you get you get one you get one in per room you know what I mean don't try to get yeah. greedy and think you're gonna change the world and start growing better Let's like it, two levels of better weed it's not well, gonna ha- it's not gonna happen you know what I mean you can have one one decent oh, one, if you're lucky we yeah. got. <laughs> I've noticed well, that a lot I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go. <laughs> one, one of you go. One of you guys go ahead. Go, no, Mario. Go. Go, Mario. I've noticed that a lot. 
what the cultivation centers that we're putting together now. Yeah. Like, especially up in the Northeast, uh, a lot of these guys have these ideas, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like, well, let's, let's keep it simple when we start out here and let's do the right thing. Let's start off with the lighting and let's, let's get that set up right. We have a lot of options for you guys. Yeah. We have CMH, we have the, we have the quartz, we have the, D, the, we have the HPS and any lamp you'd like. You know, we do Lucio, fill up Sortilux usually, and then we have the VC. And the VC we'll introduce in a little bit, but I want to make sure the uniformity in the room is correct. I want to make sure that, you know, we can, they can get more bang for their buck, save money, and still have a, a, like a, a fantastic layout. And, I mean, some people, they've got some crazy ideas out there, and it's kind of our job to, you know, steer them right. And yeah. it's not always easy because, you sure. know, they, they come into this and they think that, you know, some of us have been at this for a while. I was all here, you know. Right. <laughs> and Well, I've had to argue. I've had to argue with correct. people over because their brother told, you know, their like, brother looked at it like the floor My plan. My buddy said, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah well, yeah, he looked yeah, at the floor plan said. and they were like, but what if I squeeze the table in right at the end here, you know? And I'm just like, what are you, yeah, yeah. What are you doing right oh, now? Like, you can't do that. Then there's no way to get to the fucking other corner. That We can't reach that corner, so then you're fucked, you know what I mean? And then they're like, huh, they don't get it, you know? And you're like, you got to get to everywhere. you got to be able to reach everything because wherever you can't reach is where the powdery mildew starts. That's the, that, that's the rule of thumb in a big, large-scale facility. You know what I mean? It well, sounds like... Yeah, yeah. Every extra step is multiplied by the number of times that you do it in a year, and we really are past the age of the pirate pot planter. We're in the age where if, if we're going to do it as an industry... We have to start, we, we take and we shave our expenses, right? Mm-hmm. Incremental savings, those pennies we shave off here, pennies we shave off there, is where the dollars of profit that we get are built. Because it's not, I mean, maybe now in the prohibition states, it's still high priced. But I can walk out my door here in Portland, Oregon, and within a mile of here, I can buy a $600 pound of it's mids, it's high mids, okay. but uh, but it's not bad, you know. For six hundred dollars, I'm spending less than forty bucks an ounce wholesale. Yeah, that's uh, you know, if I'm if I'm trying to produce ten, twenty thousand pounds a year, I can't afford to to waste. You know, if I waste a quarter, twenty five cents in producing each of them, mm-hmm. look at how much money I wasted. Right. So it okay. really is about growing smarter. It is about so that, to your point, well, I mean, I think we're reaching a point where the market is going to become heavily commoditized sometime within the next five years. And there are going to be some stops and starts with it because we do still have so many prohibition states. But, I mean, I think at this point we have an industry that's here to stay. And the thing that's going to matter as far as being able to make it uh, long term from a business perspective uh, is threefold. It's going to be consistency. Um you know, the acceptable quality. I, I would love to live in a world where all the cannabis was top shelf. I really would. But I think no, we're going to see a bifurcation. never going to happen. Never going to happen. We know that. No, we're going to be yeah, a craft beer. Yep. We're sure. going to have our craft and mm-hmm. we're going to have our Coors Light. And most people are going to buy Coors Light. And the people who care and who actually have a palate are going to go after the craft. But, right. yep. but the, the main thing to, to that is scalability. Because if you're not scalable, you cannot grow. If you cannot grow, you cannot play a commodity game. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, if you're spending a thousand dollars to create one pound of cannabis, and I've consulted on <coughs> several growers recently that did not have a grasp on what their cost per pound production was, and once we drilled down those numbers and really looked at it, mm-hmm. they were spending more per pound to grow than they could wholesale that particular pound for. Sure. Um, and it, you know, we run into that. We see major cost overruns with uh, electrical. We see major cost overruns with poor facilities design increasing the amount of burden of labor. So your labor costs go through the roof because you've got people hand watering because you skimp when you put your facility in or you've got plants on the floor so it's taking you longer to get to a flower because those root balls are staying cooler than it's optimal. You've got all of these different things that are creating these incremental or sometimes extreme overruns and costs. A lot of people, like I see people frequently um, buying nutrient lines and paying exorbitant amounts of money based on what's actually in the bottle. You know, I mean, a lot of this stuff is are things we can source outside of the cannabis world for, for a tenth of what we're paying for within 
uh, the cannabis market. I call it the cannabis tax. People are, are essentially taxing us because they assume that we don't know better. And it, to me, it seems morally reprehensible, but that's a, an entirely different discussion. Right. But when you start looking at gardens from my perspective, which is typically going into distressed outfits and looking not only at their gardens and their production, but their numbers and things, you see a lot of of these little things where it is, it's the, it's the death of a thousand pinpricks from a financial perspective. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, and that's, I mean, that it's all about size too. So like, like Wolf yeah. was saying, like we're getting to that point now where, um, you know, I know people in the, I mean, I know, I know one, one particular person who's, you know, it's, he's obviously not doing all the work, but he's in charge of a lot of gardens in LA and they're all legal gardens and he pulls their, their team does 4,200 pounds a, a week. You know I mean? That's their, that's their, so, so the, so the numbers are huge when you start looking at like the, that's just one crew, you know what I mean? Working hard and with a bunch of different facilities, but it kind of like, it shows, you know, that, that, and that's nothing when you start thinking about the bigger, bigger scale, but it is like when it, when we, when you think about it from a guy who's already done it or a girl who's already done it, or is, you know, anybody who's done it enough, you know, that every pound is a, is a, is a, a very serious amount of work in my mind because it could, used to be a lot of money. It used to be a lot of money and it was a, still a lot of work now it's a lot of work and it's not a lot of money you know i mean so it's like oh shit uh every, except at the top you know every pound. at the top grade yeah well, if they, you grow yeah. the best you still get decent money decent yeah more head doctor less blue dream that's what i'm saying right yeah and, and we all we yeah, all and I think, well we all want it to go higher but at the same time what happens is people get to it it's very hard it's like it's like you used to always like never pull out your good weed around people when you just sold them weed because you didn't want them to smell your weed. So you'd like <laughs> smoke, smoke your last joint with them. With, yeah. Okay. And then they leave and you pull out the better weed. You know what I mean? Like that. And that's just the, the yeah. name of the game in a sense. In our, yeah. In our yeah. house, arm hide the head stash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my dad, you, my dad used to steal our kind buds and say he was flushing them down the toilet and then he'd go smoke it with his buddies yes. back in the day. <laughs> So, whole, so that is the whole reason to have kids. I thought, right, just to wait for them to get better weed. Right. So wait for them to get better weed than you. So you're like, damn, finally, finally, you're useful. God. That's funny. <laughs> get to work. Nick. So that's why my mom started talking to me again. Right. Right. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I got better weed finally. Well, yeah, my mom's just a teenager. That I, that I shouldn't have to put a lock on the weed cabinet, then I would be a lot happier, but they're a little thieving monster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's not their residence. I noticed those jars getting low really fast. <laughs> I, yeah. I had some really nice stage masks for Adam that last run from Canacon when you did the panel with Odie and all the guys. Right. Uh, Right. Those tests that you gave me were awesome, dude. Oh, beautiful. Um, oh, oh, beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I forget. I was, I was tracking those for a while. They were, they're, they're always on, they're, have, they're on the sweet side. They're on, with, with, I think the ones that you had, well, I'm not sure. I you, they remember. Were, they were coded. They were coded, so I have to figure out which ones you were. They, they stacked, though. They were, they, were, they were something to stack. They put on some weight. They were nice. Nice. And those back. You're welcome. I think it might have awesome. been, Thank uh, you. I think it might have been a banner cross or something like that on one of them, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. So, um, tell yeah. me. So, tell me. Uh, we were talking about your new LEDs, but right now uh, the, got, the your double ended are still uh, pretty much. Yeah, like we got a lot going strong, mm-hmm. going strong in places that our people are because because the one thing is, I mean, with lighting. Uh, it's like you, you kind of give and take so much that in the end of the day, it's just kind of like your plants just develop differently. And so like when you're growing thousand watts, you can grow really tall plants and get enough production in them. So if you're doing like edibles or something like that, I feel like thousand watts high up, big plants, let them go as big as possible is probably the best thing. But then when you're trying to grow nicer bud, sometimes it's better to get tighter and like less, that's, less. That's le- why I love. It. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that's just, why I love it. But, the new halides, the new halides, I love it. Because the resin production, everything, and you get the weight, too. It, it really is something else. It's, it's, I'd like to, it's like having a few CMH lamps, in one of my opinion. Wolf gets mad at me when I say that, but I feel as though that's what, what we're getting with the, with the course. Uh, the 
And the Isaac Road Craft have been exclusively using that lamp, and uh, the resin production of trikes is, is pretty fantastic. I'm I'm running a bunch of uh, all the homegrown natural wonders under that right now. The veg flower, and it, it, I'm loving it, loving it. I'm loving those blues too. When when you uh, when you go in the room, I like that as opposed to all the, the sodium and the red. But you know, still mixing the spectrum because you know, get the best of both worlds at that point. So we've been checkerboarding the divas with both lamps and seeing really good results. Um, so yeah, it's a hit. It's a it's a it's a double ended. Double enders are out there. You know, uh, ours is powerful. It really is. You know, we've done side by sides, and um, you know, uh, running it even at less seventy five to a thousand watts. You know, we're still driving the lamps more efficiently than some of the competition. Um, we're out in Colorado, and Tom, Tom and the crew at Bonsai, they do really good work. So we did some side-by-sides in there, and we were really impressed with what we saw. And then, uh, obviously, over at Mayflower with Drew and Bruce, they're doing really good work, too. So, I know you had It's flashing red. Yeah, but um, I, I, the checkerboard pattern right now is, is with which is the, the diva with the CHPS and the uh, the halide is, is really, really where it's at, I believe, anyways. You know, because you're getting that, that, that nice mix spectrum. I got to come up here and set that up so we can all play under it. That's what I got to do. Yeah, yeah I, I'm I'm so, I'm sort of inclined to that the sun is so has so much stuff. Uh, at so many different wavelengths that uh, I think in, in some ways, I mean, yeah, staying, staying and paying really good attention to the spectrum and the intensity, but I think that it may also be that there are differences in waves we don't as yet really have figured out that yeah. just also coming from multiple technologies, I think we pick up um, some, maybe some harm, harmonics and uh Basically, uh, just good wavelengths in in how they're interacting. A a shotgun approach. If there's a receptor there that we don't know, let's feed it and then find it. Let's feed it and find it, exactly. And that's why what what I believe you're doing, and like the Emerson effect you were explaining earlier, and the work you're doing with green and all that. You know, a lot of people see that and they're like, green, really? And I'm like, well, let me me get Wolf over here to explain this to you. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, bomber in the sky, baby, and he's you know he's been at the forefront of this. And uh, for a minute or two. <laughs> oh yeah, but um, um, you know, and it's it's fun. It's 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 everyone gets something to geek over, and for me, it's it's mm-hmm. hot and and but lights especially. You know the the there's a pat, the first place that I ever ran across quantum physics was in Bill Drake's book. The Cultivator's Handbook of Marijuana. Mm-hmm. And, Excellent. you know, it explained what quantum leaps are about and just starts you, started me thinking about energy. And when you're really looking at the light and, and you're paying attention to, to what's going on there, you can, you can just about put your head into the plant um, and, and be at that place where the energy is driving the chemicals and splitting the, the, the molecules and you can, you can feel that vitality, and and the more that you can put, I'll get all hippie hippie woo woo. The more of yourself that you can put there and generate and direct, the better the plants are going to do. Beyond the science, it's not like it, instead of it's in addition to. And if it's if it's just theory, it still can't hurt. Mm-hmm. Nope. Right, right. Um, that, you okay. know, I think the the uh, thing right now that. Uh, it's kind of interesting is that there's there's even more uh I've, I've heard of some lighting lately that i've been like okay now it's getting to the point where i'm starting to get a little bit like wow we're, we're, we're gonna because as we you know i was saying the renaissance hi uh, the uh, ceramic metal highlight is kind of old technology has just been miniaturized and, and a little bit more higher frequencies and there's a few differences in that sense but it's still using uh, gas and Still, it's still a light, right. it's still a light bulb. You know what I mean? It's not like it's a different, nope. yeah. different, different planet coming from a different planet. Plasma, uh-huh. plasma, on the other hand, uh, oh hell yes, getting <laughs> get, <laughs> is getting closer to Hopefully, that. Man. 
Um, you guys are you guys are ever thinking about going in that direction, or that's kind of like not really in, on the horizon for for them. Right now, we're, we're oh yeah, me. Um, we we definitely yeah, we got some things in the works. We'll play some stuff. <laughs> because so. it's like these are like super because those are like when you get to the supercar kind of mentality, you know, where it's like you have to unveil your technology. You can't like let anybody know because oh, there is oh, some major changes. Okay. Oh, oh no, I, I'm I've been I've been talking about this stuff all over Facebook for several years now. Mm-hmm. Um, that that what we need to do is pay attention to all of our harmonics, and since we're going to pay attention to our electrical consumption, then really the future is about light light depth, light sub greenhouses using plasma as the supplemental light, and not 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 the not the Lumix LEP type or, or Topanga LEP type plasma, but the high energy plasma, high efficiency plasma, sulfur plasma lighting. Because what it puts out is those shorter wavelengths, which is higher energy. In a greenhouse, greenhouse coverings block or absorb most of the high-frequency light. So if we can throw, they don't take up much space, the HEPSTLs inside there, and and get get our use a a spectroradiometer to get our frequencies right so that we're getting our, our relative amplitudes at the different wavelengths, correct. Using, <clears throat> there's a glass that they make in Hungary that, that will let wavelengths below 300 nanometers through, so we can give it actual sun levels of UV and fine-tune so that we can control, you know, b- between, b- between yeah, our right. ability to control transmittal and translucence in greenhouse coverings and in the materials that we use for making lamps, we can, in fact, we can't duplicate the the, the barometric pressures of, of foreign environments, but we can definitely mimic the we we can mimic the um, latitude and altitude, so that we can get the UV levels right, we can get the infrared levels right, we can get the cycles through the course of the day that we give the plant, right? Light, you know, less light, more light. But also besides that, there's there are some pretty quick ephemeral photo reactions, things that are some clouds go by, and in those moments that the clouds go by, there's some phototropic reactions where the leaves are reacting to it. Uh, there's the, What it gets is a little different. The closer we can come to that... The plants aren't meant to grow up in its perfect all the time. You make a trade-off of yield for quantity, uh, of yield for potency, and for the nature of the effect. So mm-hmm. we have. It's if if we want to get real crazy and serious about it, then yeah, we, we're going to sit there. We're going to throw up greenhouses that have the the HVAC system that I've talked about. Uh, we're going to deal with the odor, humi- relative humidity, and, and like that, we've got some systems getting ready to jump out that are amazing like that. We're going to, you know, throw plasma in it. When the, the high-energy plasma, I was looking at five of them putting out, apparently, at, on, on the meters that we had, as much light as 16 and a half DE HPSs. I mean, 1,300-watt lights out doing uh, it, uh, out, was it 15, 17, 16? God, I'm sorry. It was someplace between 15 and 18, and I just grabbed that number, but I'm not remembering. So I'm not, I, I don't want to be held to that one. But it's, it's, it was over 15 of them, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we're sitting there. It, it's just amazing what can be done. And if you add in, you're getting all that free red and far red from the sun that you're not having to make. Right. You don't have to make heat. You can be carrying that heat and reusing that heat. There's a, there's a Cheyenne word. The Cheyenne word for bison is hawate, and I use it as a verb. And we need to be using our energy. We need to be hawate in every input that we put in. Right. We don't have an excuse to waste. Hmm. The earth is limited. Yeah, we grow shit, but there's only so much of it, and we do have kids, like grandkids, that. and our grandkids will have grandkids. Okay, I'm off my high horse. Okay, yet. so no, so at the end of the day, really, what it comes down to then is efficiency for um, 
the amount of uh, uh, micromoles or uh, yeah. whatever's yeah. U- whatever's usable by the by the plant. I guess would be the best indicator, right. in my opinion. And then, um, but but yeah. then but then the amount of uh, energy that it takes to create that, and the amount of coverage that it does, and then the, you know then you get the the depth that it can do and. So there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's definitely a lot of angles, uh, literally, uh, that you can look at it from, and then there's also yeah. the, the, the variety too, you know. So using the right variety yeah. in the right in the right conditions. So there's all these things that you have to like, either pre know because you've done did, did it before, which is the best, the, in my opinion, and then there's the. Uh, you know, and or what, what they told you. <laughs> like, yeah, these are going to be really short, you know, and then you're like, wow, wow, why are they seven and a half feet tall? Well, nobody <laughs> nobody ever tested them, actually. You're the only one. You're, you're the first guy or girl that's ever grown them. So. Um, Guys, I, uh, I got to drop off, but I hate to interrupt, but I got to drop off here okay. for a bit, or my husband may feed my children Skittles for dinner. Oh, yeah. You so. just, uh, <laughs> lucky <laughs> them. Those Skittles are good. Get them the I mean, the yellow ones are. Uh, Thanks, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, we'll, we'll, right, we'll, def- we'll definitely talk. Thank yeah. you. See, yes. see you next week, Junior. Or, or, yeah, see you next week. Yeah, exactly. We should bring Wolf down to uh, uh, Central America. We, there's a lot of stuff happening down there. We could get you down by the equator. Let's do it. I don't know. That's the place to be right now. Um, I, yeah, no doubt. So, what do you think? Um, so, like so, 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 Wolf, what do you think is the. Um, uh, because the thing about so, what's weird with the, the weird part I found with um, plasma was that it, on its own, it seemed to be in a weird way lacking something. Even though that it, by by the books it looked like it was hitting every little what bell and whistle possible and following the exact it, it, line. It's, it, it, it's that's why they the suffered. Right what was that's the, why what, they, they suffered. What, what was the, was, it, was it the red? Is that what you're saying? I mean, that's it seems it's, to, it's, it's short at the red end, far red, and near infrared. It's got, I mean, it's got them, but it isn't. See, the the thing that the one really cool thing about the the near infrared, the stuff that runs from seven hundred and fifty nanometers out to about seven eighty, which is why it's included in P bar, is because that extra temperature, that infrared, going on when it hits the the, can, the plant surfaces. Is it's it is aiding nutrient uptake. It's extra warmth. It's why an LED usually you set ten degrees the room ten degrees hotter than you would in an HPS room because that infrared heat that's happening at the surface under an HPS isn't happening with an LED. So that's that that's that that piece of it that 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 the uh, plasmas don't really have. But if you're doing light depth. In a greenhouse, what is the greenhouse effect? It's red and infrared, near infrared, getting trapped in that that built heat. So you, those, you know, nature's giving you richly in a depth, but you're losing all, you know, a lot of your high frequency. So you replace that, and you're back to a properly harmonious light for the plant. It's singing the. The, the the sky starts singing the plant it needs to summon its nutrition and nourishment from the earth. Right, right. And I like I like well, the, that, I like the harmonic part. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, and the thing is, it's not it's not. Although I don't have experimental stuff where I've got numbers to show. Okay, at this what because. You know, a, a spectro radiometer is an expensive little piece of gear. I understand I may get one this year because I stumbled into some pretty neat things that are starting to pick up finally. But um, there's uh, there's it's going to be fun to to play with it and and get to where you can match that curve. What's the because one you suggest, Everline? Sorry, we'll go ahead. Say again. The Everline, um, the spectrometer. The, the one I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, oh, I, I'm the, the, the one. The one I'm after is an ocean optics. Uh, right. I, I love the lighting passport. It's a nice handheld unit, but I want to play mad scientist with real mad scientist gear, and I'm going to get a chance. You know, a, a laboratory grade 
spectro radiometer rather than a spectro photometer. I'm not going to count photons. Photons are these made up things that that we came up with because we wanted to have something like lumens to describe <laughs> what was going on with plants. Yeah. But the, mm-hmm. the, the the problem with that is that they don't actually relate to anything. A a, a photon isn't a measurement of energy. It, it's like the the numbers on the dial of your radio, but not 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 what's going on inside. Just the numbers. Those numbers aren't, you know, this this much on the dial equals this much of the strength of the of the power. So it's instead we need things that measure um, like milliwatts per square meter uh-huh. per uh-huh. second. Instead, instead, that that's that's the kind of thing we need to do to get to where we can fine tune it to really match the sun. And what that will let us do is we find, I mean, the sun has too much of a lot of different wavelengths in it. So you figure out which Mm -hmm. one you want, whatever kind of damage it does, the, whatever, the one you don't want the most of the damage that it does, you set your level to just below that damaging level. And then you set everything else in Mm -hmm. solar proportion to that level. Mm-hmm. You're now at the maximum beneficial light for that plant. Yeah, and, so, and <clears throat> I mean it's it's uh it's interesting how long, how much it's come you know, but but at the same time, like uh, an old school cool white bulb, veg is a pretty decent plant. You know, what I mean, like it still does not too oh, bad. Oh hell yes! And and it, it seems like uh, you know, in the for the most part, it seems like the vegging side of the plant is almost like. You don't. I mean, you you do. You know, you could you can specialize on it, of course. But for the most part, like you know, it, like not to say any bulb will do, but for the most part, like it's not too hard. It seems like the plant becomes more complex when it gets into flower, where it seems like very critical. Like the, all of a sudden, the lighting is a more critical thing than ever. Oh yeah, totally. And yeah. Uh, but but think about what's going on in nature. When is when is it getting the most UV? It's getting the most UV in the middle of veg. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's that's why I love the the, the Phillips um, ceramics, the three fifteens for a veg. I, I'll keep a mother's healthy. I just think it's the way to go. But you know, an AgroBright T five, you can do, you can veg perfectly with that too. You can want year old fluorescence. Um, but you're right. Once you get the flower, the critical steps are necessary. You get you get that mixed spectrum, that that great mixed spectrum. You know, and that's why I'm a fan of mixing everything: supplemental CMH, um, mm-hmm. the, the quartz now, the, the, the high pressure sodium. But they got to be quality lamps if you want to produce quality. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. and ratios are kind of important too. Like, like or, you know, like yeah. with the the rule of thumb, I always thought when back when I was doing like uh, you know uh, gardens that were still still underground or whatever. But I would always like try to mix them if I could. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as extreme as going like checkerboard because I always felt like checkerboard you ended up sort of like uh, yeah oh, too much of it would be too much of one because of the depth you know what mm-hmm. I mean like so it didn't seem yeah uh, with the um, sodiums I I'd do them every for every four sodiums there'd be one halide and it'd be in the middle of the sodiums and up higher and blend, mm-hmm. and blend in and then it always seemed to be the kind of like all right that's the seems to work you know and and it gave just enough yeah. blue but not too much and the blue seemed to go through swirling yeah, with the other I, ones, you know what I mean? So, And that, and that kind of works differently with different genetics. Uh-huh. So that, like, what happens at, at at one point, cannabis is this incredibly accommodating plant, so when we give it different epigenetic factors, what we carve from the block of genetic potential changes, because it'll give us anything we want. Okay. Um and, and we were growing under halides, and then people started growing under sodes, right, adding sodiums, yeah. and then some people just left them, and some of the plants they liked did really well. Well, now here we are 30 years later, and we have some strains, some, excuse me, some cultivars uh, that, that are, in fact, completely HPS adapted. I had a black domina that was, uh, she was an HPS plant. She would not flower. I mean, you, I do I do the 24 to 48 hour dark mm-hmm. in order to get them to, yeah. to 
blew them faster, harder. Yeah. And yeah. even with that, I could not get her to bloom um, if no. there was any blue within like eight feet of her. Hmm. Interesting. She, and, That's interesting. You know, so, so we got, we do have some of those. And I have the, but, uh, and it's funny too, because I have the perfect um, uh, situation right now where I have literally the, that same exact setup of four, four and one. And I'm noticing that exact problem on one of the one of the plants where I'm like, hmm, it's not really kicking in too much. So I'm actually going to experiment myself and turn off that middle one for like the next two weeks and see what happens and see if it's just sort of yeah, I mean, it's but it's kind of stupid it's, it's almost like saying it's like it's like saying yeah. I'm not going to shave for two weeks and see if my hair is my face hair yeah. is coming in thicker because somebody told you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're like I don't know dude it keeps coming in you know so the plant's going to keep growing but hopefully well see I'm hoping a lot that we're going to over the next two to four years See some of the universities in some of the uh, more traditional producing states mm -hmm. actually lobby to get us some um, some state research licenses that will be able to be tied to the federal licenses to manufacture for research mm -hmm. because there are going to be a dozen of those issued this year. Right. Where, where do you have in mind for those? Oregon. Um, well, one, one, one in particular, there is a research program I hope I can find someone that will hire me to be a research assistant on, uh, and it would be into the epigenetic factors, how epigenetic factors, like what, what the growth conditions we give them, how they influence chemotypic expression, like what, what chemical expressions we get in known genetics so that we start with, okay, here are, here's a dozen different kinds, and now we're going to give those dozen different kinds each a dozen different ways. Right. What would, were there differences? Okay, yes, there were. So now we've determined that epigenetic factors influence chemotypic expression. Now we have to find out how, you know, I mean, you advance it out to, you take it as far as you can with which epigenetic factors influence what chemotypic expression in what genotypes. Because at that point, we're going to be looking at the reality that most of medicine and probably most of social use with cannabis mm -hmm. is going to be recombined extracts. Oh, yeah. Well, not, yeah, not, yeah of course. not the top shelf flower, yes, but in terms of bud light, Right, the equivalent of that. Well, let's call it that. Bud Light Bud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh God, if my name was Bud, I would make that my brand. I'd be. It'd be Bud Light Buds Bud. Bud. Right. And then you can grow mids. Bud, bud grows. Buds, yeah. Bud grows mids would be the would be, would be yeah. Your, 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 yeah. Uh, but 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 you're right. It'll be, it will be blends. I don't think, and yeah. It'll be blends, and it will be uh, not craft. That will be the masses. Of no, course, you know. but what that means is that the people who really love the flower mm -hmm. enough to one want to consume it and two want to grow it, or one want to grow it and two want to consume it. Take your pet. Um, yeah. Either way, they they are going to we are going to see the mid level quality be about where top shelf right now is, uh -huh. and the top uh -huh. shelf quality be so far advanced it's like holy shit yeah because we're going to see people really bringing we're going to see first class people bringing their a games with full motivation we see that and now. That, we'll, we'll, we'll a little bit. that's why we're moving in that direction that's why we're not stagnating it's, it, but yeah. uh, you know there aren't people out there doing what I'm talking about with plasma and, 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 and light gap right now that I know of. If there are, they should give me a call at Adam's show, invite me, I want to come see it. I'll bring Lawrence Chernak with me. We'll take that, pictures. Is that, is that a we'll threat? write about is that a threat? it. Is that a threat? That is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what it is. You know what it is. Um, so, uh, so, what do you think about you now? I heard something, and I thought I, I kind of called bullshit, and I wanted to ask when you were on the show because I was like, "Hmm, 
you know, and it's like, it was kind of one of those vague things too, where someone tells you a story where you're like, all right, this has really no, like could, he couldn't remember where he saw it or heard it. So that's already a bad, like bad sign right there. And then, um, it was about lighting. It was about some new space thing where there was no physical light that you could see, but the plants would, could respond because of the, they had hit some sort of infrared beams blah 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 and i was all i don't know let me and it was like it was a it was a uh unknown we don't see the light below for below about 380 and we know that 380 to at least to 285 works on plants right so and and then up it's there there may be i mean it it's it may be that what's happening is we've got an interaction of waves uh-huh. that isn't at a visible level right. that's causing something harmonically that isn't in our visible range, but that nonetheless is in the, the our plant's sensorium, right. right? And we don't know it's there. We we can't say it's there because we don't know to look for it. How do you find? How do you look for something you don't know exists? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the uh, yeah. So you so you're thinking in that. That wave, that wave, like uh, it's not an yeah, those. it's not an impossibility. Yeah. I'm, I'm not prepared to eliminate anything till I've tried it, sure. or or, it, or my brain just says no fucking way. Oh, pardon me, no way. You can say that. I, is yeah. that it? Uh-huh. You know. Uh, well, but I, get, I mean, if you're growing, the you right know, thing, like flame like, for mites is something I'm not going to do. Right. Well, I mean, if it was like a lima bean or something, or something that we had, like, you know, could take, could, could, you know, I don't know about cannabis, yeah. but maybe, you know, there's certain things that might grow under very <laughs> limited uh, wavelength. I like that. Yeah. So there is some truth and validity um, to my friend's bullshit story, which he was like, dude, they have this new yeah, red light. It can, uh, it's can a possibility. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not prepared to, to go, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I haven't disproven it. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Oh, I could see. I like just don't. See, I could see it growing something. Maybe <laughs> something. Yeah. It will, it will grow that. That, but not those. Well, I mean, I, I had I had some plants that ended up in a room that didn't go over twenty eight for three weeks, and it's a good thing because the lights were off in the room for three weeks. Turned the lights back on, the heat came back up, and the plants were still alive. Really? Well, they, like stunted, just like were they plants or were they just seedlings or were they? No, they were plants. And they were frozen at 20, 28 degrees for twenty eight degrees with no light. And they came back yeah, well, with no light. Well, and then lights came on, heat came on, and the plants. I mean, they weren't, you know, they weren't coming on gangbusters. No one was going to put, you know, no one was going to take their picture to send to High Times with them or anything, but how they many, were alive. How many, how many days? Three weeks. Um, what? So I'm saying about three weeks. Jesus. Definitely like, more than two, yeah, and like I most, don't think you're, four. You're almost the biggest plant torturer I've ever met, but that's it's close to it. That's close to the most plant torturer I've ever heard. Three weeks. Good, Alex yeah. Hardy does a pretty good job of torturing his plants. Oh, Hardy? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like Utah. yeah um, I mean, yeah. You, your, your, coin, your coin phrase there, Wolf, is you bulletproof them, right? Is that, is that what you always say? Bombproof them. Oh, bombproof. Yeah. See, bomb-proof. I'm not to bombproof them. Bombproof, yes. Mm-hmm. That's, your, that's his, his, his signature way of growing. So, see, you already know, <laughs> you already know how people grow when, they, when they're talking about bombproofing. Oh yeah, I just like, yeah, I beat them up, you know. <laughs> like really okay. I mean, I do yeah. it too. I do it too, but it's, it's like one of those. It's like the, the, uh, the most obviously it takes the longest, and it's the least satisfying part of the whole job, pretty much. Where you have to like torture plants, and I mean, you do it anyway. I mean, we do. We all do it in our own ways, you know. But yeah. uh, but when you do it purposely, it's always weird. So it's like. Hmm. Uh, what are you doing? Right? What the hell am I? I can't do this. So like watching, it's like watching. You know, you can have a chance to watch this thing happen in slow motion, but you can't do nothing about it. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're like no. So, um, uh, yeah. what, tell me, tell me more on the um, if you know, uh, as far as like in within the cannabis lighting world. Is there like because it seems like I mean I heard Gavitas were gone down to like what two hundred and ninety nine bucks like straight out the door for anybody or something that was like didn't they like, yeah they're going like rock I mean it's I, 
Huh? Yeah. They're all, yeah, but a lot of a lot of guys have a lot of light sitting around, you know. I know it. You think it's just that, or you, you think know? it's a change in, in technology? I mean. Um, uh, well, well, what do you think about that change in technology? I, 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 I think I, I think that people aren't making four thousand dollars a pound in Los Angeles anymore. So it's a lot. There's a lot of people who are, who were prepared to spend stupid money for lights that are like now they're uh, um, uh about it. I'm okay. Let's see. I can spend this much a year doing it here, but now I can grow it outside legally. And except that you know the little guys are getting screwed out of that. But um, yeah, lighting's coming down. Lighting is mm-hmm. it has to. It does have to. You're right. And, and we've seen that a lot. The, every expense, uh, whether it's nutrients, mm-hmm. whether it's light, every, you know, if I buy a thousand of them, I want to save a couple bucks on every one of them because that's yeah. going to pay for one of my people, sure. you know, for a, a day or two or three or four or out, you know, I, if I'm going to be a real business, I actually have to be a real business but besides having a real business or being a real business, I have to do it in the most responsible way I can because of where it's coming from, you know? And so how do you do that? You make the value add of, of being green. You make the value add of being best. You make the value add of being able to actually go, look, I do it the most efficiently. I'll take, you will pay me to show you how to do it better because you'll make more money. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a piece of it, you know? Yeah, it's true. Um, we've been making stuff to order, so we have like a little bit of a delay when, when we're designing stuff right now. It's not a pro- bad problem to have, but everything's coming fresh to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and with our ballast, you won't have to really worry about stuff breaking. And if something were to happen, you know, with, with the Diva or Revolution Micro, we can we can swap out the, the board right there for you, or you could do it, actually, like the guy at the end user. So if you had a thousand up and one happened to go out, we we make sure to send you like a case of the circuit boards, the, the motherboards of the ballast. It takes you eight minutes. You don't get dirty. You don't have to take the light down. You swap it right out. So that's one of the things we offer too. It's it's one of the only field repairable grow lights. Mm-hmm. There is one other field repairable grow light it's that uh, Sun System air cooled DE that they did a few years ago. It was the the uh, the double ended with the glass over it. Yeah. Which I think kind of defeats the purpose of a double uh, lens. I, 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 I was just going to say that's like the, the, the dumbest. That's like there's a few of those like 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 Darwin Awards for for grow equipment things that come out that you're just that's that's, that's like that's kind of that's, one of them. Yeah. that's one of them you know and and you know to be quite honest and that, not to take anything away from your lights that you guys put out but I, I'm always mm-hmm. a little bit of a I just I don't like having two the two three fifty two three fifteen bulbs in the same thing. In either, yeah. in either format, like the, the head-to-head is the way I had it from one company, and then the side-by-side I really don't like. And then, you know, I mean, it's like there's like, no, I have a, I have a real hard time. I'd rather spread out things and just have more of them and then have them anything close. Because when you put two next to each other, it kind of defeats the purpose because they don't well, multiply anything. They just kind of like give you. Well, and I mean, if you and if you've got a ballast that can drive two of them, you know, get you use the Amphenol connectors so that things don't break apart. Why not give and and some nice radio, sh- some electromagnetic interference shielded cable lab cords, and let me put them, customize them. You know, custom where I hang them mm-hmm. by having three feet, five feet, however, you know, a couple feet of of room to move them around. Mm-hmm. I can put them lower. I can get my intensity back by putting them lower. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm with you on yeah. that one, Adam. Yeah, I mean, because instead Way of having, you, on that one. you know, like if you have a room of say, like oh. you have sixty of those doubles, and then you, that means you, you know, you have 120 technically. Like, and then even though it's okay, it's cool they're running off of the one setup. Just if you could have had, you know, and this is something maybe you guys would yeah. talk to your guys about. You have them so you can satellite two, two head, you know go with the original or the satellite i mean come up with something that's cool like that but just make it so that you have the option to have uh that 120 hoods that are movable you know what i mean instead of having the 60 like you had oh. because, because it could it could double up on especially on veg and a few other things and, and certain varieties and, and the way yeah. the way you grow you know tight ones. being able to move them further apart or closer to get yeah yeah just it's to have not, just it's not to, finalized 
Just, we may we may still introduce a three fifteen, you know, but, but the six thirty it, it's housed in the diva, the, the, the diva, the, uh, right? The and, and all you got to do is where it's coming out to each of them. You've already got two legs coming off. Yeah. There's no reason not to put it going, you know, to, to a radio shielded power cord Makes with each one that yeah. gives you just enough room to, you know that little bit of flexibility. Cool. Throw the same reflector, either throw the the 150-degree PL reflector that I sent you a picture of, a bunch of pictures of, but uh, since PL is not making those anymore, little throw old, that on it. Old or school, throw, little old-school like, PLs things, little cuppers, little cups. Um, there's, there's a PL, it's a medium-watt PL that looks a lot like what they have now, except that um, because it was 150 uh, degree, it didn't come as far down this uh, on the arc tube, like where it, where it shadows where it's over the top and comes down um, where the bottom edge of the reflector runs parallel to the center of the arc mm-hmm. on an HPS. You, there's there is a thing that you need a somewhat different shape in back of your arc tube just because you've got the, the spherical arc tubes instead of the long tubular ones. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the reflector companies haven't taken that into account. Um, is this like a Seattle Hydro, but, yeah. Dimpled, Go ahead. dimpled or is it not dimpled? Um, honestly, flat white. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm out to diffuse light. If the reason... Yeah, if I if I don't want reflective loss, and I'm out to if I'm out to diffuse light to get as many possible points of entry in the canopy, the whole advantage of that sea of light that that's why you know you stick a zillion of them up there. If you put enough if you put enough photons into an area, then every every place in the area is going to get visited by some of those photons. They don't ever go away. The energy from them is further and further apart the further from its source it gets. But when you've got overlapping, we're not lighting square feet. We're lighting cubic feet. Well, but, but the other we, problem is you've got the... Um, uh, with the uh, well, loss of... I mean, with the, when, when you're heating up stuff, I mean, that's the other problem, too. Is I, I actually lost my, yeah. I lost my train of thought totally on that one. But uh, <laughs> I, I, was, I was on to something, and then I thought... Wait a minute, we're locked out. No, we're not. We almost we almost had the classic Friday the Thirteenth moment here, where we locked ourselves out of the place that we're plugged into with the van right now. But luckily, some lady came and opened it. But then I'm thinking, are we? Yeah. New arm was on. And yeah, was good like, life. I was like, oh my god, the next thing's gonna happen. We're, we're stuck. Um, but um, take us away. Well, like, with the with the six thirty reflected, the thing I like about it is a lot of guys are doing these bigger facilities. They want to stuff that in with their with their uh, their, their thousand DEs. I mean, we have that option there now with with a similar um, something that looks like the Diva, the same profile. So they could put them up. I think it provides a few good options. But you know, originally we weren't even going to go that route. So <laughs> the fact we have it. I, I'm kind of excited about it, but I've never... Oh, really, hell yes. I, I mean, I, I, I would really say that there are, the, there, there's people the people that are going to, there are people that are going to pay attention to proper spectrum that never would have if you didn't do that. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I, I would like a 315, you know, I, I'm not sure what style of a reflector we do for that. I don't know if we'd go with that. Oh, I am. Oh, like... Yeah, well, you know, Wolf has actually the best plan for that. That when he was over at working with the Seattle wolf, Hydro, the Wolf, hood. the Wolf, I'll the call wolf, the Wolf parabolic, bro. The wolf I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do it. You know, the Wolf parabolic. Yeah, we old, um, the old school Wolfie. I hmm. I asked for the uh, 30 because we I needed something else besides you know because the guys who don't want to run the quartz metal halo. You know, because a thousand watts, if they're limited, because I want to, I want to make be sure that I'm able to get the hobbyists as well as the, you know, the commercial guys Some, coming from retail and grow, growing in a closet. It's important that I can get everyone what they want, and 
provide options because I retail is still very important to me and, and guys I still fill in at the store you know at home and hydro store I built it's important to me to get the, the home growers too and the patients and if they want that as opposed to a thousand watt DE yeah take a 630 because with, with the power of the diva ballast you're going to get some good results you know but yeah and there's on my jam yeah and the, the like readers that. being or I'm sorry I, I can't believe I did that Divas being um, low frequency, they, they are. I, I think that Greg hasn't played with it enough. The fact that it's low frequency means he should be able to do a thousand. He should be the one who comes up with a proper thousand watt CMH. CMH as opposed and to it. three R two in a series. Yes, like right. As opposed to three three one fives or two five hundreds. A, a yeah, real. I mean, you know. You know? The failure rate on those, and but what I'm interested it's in is getting a list of lamps that will be compatible with Diva at different wattage. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get working on that probably uh, this weekend. I want to let uh, have let everyone have the options if they want to run that Grow's House CMH. You know, since it's what low frequency square wave, it should it should work fine on it. I I haven't done it yet. You know, yeah. I haven't got my hands yet. Um. Some people seem to love that that lamp, though. Um, so I want to give it a hell. shot. Oh hell yes! And and and, and you know the, the that 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 green spike going back to it is like yeah. a uh, it, it it's so funny that it does what it does because you know it um, Terashima there it is that study by Terashima where they go into green a lot. Um, is sort of what weaned me, finally confirmed and made sense out of why do HPSs work as well as grow lights as they do if PAR, just by PAR, is, or even as PBAR, but not reflecting at the yeah. different wavelengths. Why, why, why? An HPS, if, if you just go strictly by McCree and PAR, should not be able to grow anything decently. Yeah, and yet does. So, yeah, you're right. And it's that green spike that saves them. Look yeah, at yeah. LEDs from first generation, each subsequent generation, the current generation top line LEDs. None of them don't have green, and they've been getting better and better as they've been putting more and more green in them. Is this true? Um, you know, I, I I have high hopes for the LED that we're doing. Um, the one we had in Vegas was a prototype, and <coughs> I'll send you guys some info on that. Now, how is the about. green? How is the green represented in that thing? Is it? Is it it's, there? it's full. It's uh, full spectrum, so you can you it, right across the board. Well, what would you say that spectrum was comparable to the close to the sun? You think? Well, you got, it's 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 it's, it's uh, on the Avici. It's four way tunable. So mm -hmm. it, it's you know with four channels of tunability, you can pretty much. Oh. Get yeah. it to do almost anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's the closest looking spectrum to to natural sunlight. Do, I think. We'll, we'll but, do my but, taxes. We'll do my taxes, Wolf. I need to it won't. That. It, can you tune? You can't, you, can't, you can't tune that light to do your taxes. That'd be nice. That'd be that'd be a bonus. That'd be a we nice. have turbo. Oh bonus. yeah, that'd be the extra that's bonus. The Actually, given the sophistication of some of the control systems out there now. Give it another couple of years; they can probably throw in that capability. Right, like, yeah. and I'm we're sure done. Anyway, yeah, anyway, <laughs> Greg, Greg would be that guy probably get that happening. We're running by. Yeah, I can see it. What's the merit on? I want to get I want to get Greg and my buddy Daryl together and get them talking control systems, and then I'm just going to shut up and learn. I agree. So uh, actually, Daryl hit me up. Um, is Adam familiar with Daryl? He does some good stuff. And then the hang on, my dogs will be a nut. Solicure, um, Dennis Brown is going to send me some of his Solicure um, um, bulbs. Oh yeah, we've um, I've got I've got Scott doing a bunch of stuff with the uh, with those, and we're doing we're, we're, it's real pleasing. I, I spoke with him actually while I was waiting for you guys. Um, well, not waiting. <laughs> he, he had messaged yeah. me about he wants to get me some of those over my way to test. Yeah, go for it. You're uh, going to like what it does. The, the solar yeah. cures are, are, I like the flower powers best, 
but he sent me uh, some other ones. I forget what he calls them. Oh, that yeah, are sorry. Th- w- there's like a notch on 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 the COB LEDs. There's a notch where blue ought to be. You don't. Th- th- uh, if you look at the SPDs for for most of the LEDs, most of the top end LEDs, there's a notch in blue, and there's not that notch in blue in natural sunlight. Hmm. And chloroform or, or uh, the chloroplast A's are right there where that notch is. Yeah. And, in, and and this other fluorescent is a um, gives you a nice little spike at 391, but there's there's blue that fits in to where that notch is. And natural sunlight doesn't have notches. No. Um, within the far range, how far are we getting in, in, into the 300s with some of these lamps now? Are we like is the okay that with, with 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 the flower power. With the solitaire, you're actually getting down into where you, below 300 nanometers, there's only two kinds of glass that will let that through. But the yeah. receptor for UVB has its peak sensitivity. The, the receptor is called UVR8. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, its peak sensitivity is at 285 to 288. Mm-hmm. The flower power was specifically designed to give it the right proportions. If you've got everything else in the right proportions, you, you can fine tune it to where it's getting roughly 4% of the, of the radiation that it's getting is UVB. Wow. And that's what you want because UV, when, when the UVR8 receptor is stimulated, it produces transcript cases, synthases, uh, one of those ACEs, Say hi to Ace, by the way. Yeah, uh, one of those Ace's. Right. Um, yeah, but um, w- get one of those Ace. It's w- one of those or all of those. The the what stimulating UVR eight does is it triggers higher production there, and mm-hmm. the expo- and that production is to pr- is to protect the plant from having cells go go mutant during radiation or during um, meiosis when the, when they're splitting when when the plant is growing and yeah. it turns out that like THCA or actually CBGA which becomes all of the other pre or a lot of the other precursor cannabinoids um, that, that that's the waste product right when UV has gone through these synthases and all that the waste product of the plant protecting itself from the UVB is the THC. CBD is not increased by UVB. Yeah. C- THC and THCV are. are, are yeah. So, yeah. What about UVC? So what, about, what about UVC? What's the deal with that? Then when that's cancer causing, right? That's uh, you, UVC, you, you, that you can use it for, for killing microbes, yeah. but be really careful. Don't look at it. It's dangerous. I don't want to fuck with it. Oh, yeah, None of it gets to the Earth's surface, so I'm scared of this shit. I'll put it in a, uh, if I want to sterilize air coming into something hmm. or going out of something, that's okay, the fine. Then, but nothing that human beings are going to get exposed to. Right. Yeah, they gamma rays at that point. You know, they're a little long. Damn near. But we got to make sure that, uh, you know, especially like novice growers and guys like lighting noobs, we got to make sure that they're aware of this stuff, you know, with, with lights and what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. How they, how well, they I mean, I would. Be. And yeah. protective eyewear, oh. same thing for microbes when we start playing around <laughs> with my, microbial life, you know. Don't get it all yeah. over you. Um, don't look up at your life and, you know, let's take some safety precautions there. Especially for guys, don't get don't mercury. You don't want on you, you know. It's important to put, you know. One of us got to put a list together on preventatives. Pra- pra- you know, it, I mean, it's basically practice common sense. Hmm. If you, if you wouldn't stare at the sun, why would you stare it's, at the lights? If you wouldn't, you know, if you wouldn't stare them, in them in man, because I paid for those things. I didn't, I didn't pay for the sun, but I paid for those lights. So I'm gonna stare at them. <laughs> I want to stare at them for so long because I paid for them. <laughs> <them. laughs> You guys see the Avicii, Adam. I don't know if you saw it on in Vegas, but it's it's you don't want to look at it. Yeah, you don't want to look. Yeah, no, it's you do not want to look at that thing. It's it's horribly bright, like we said. You know, it will hurt your eyes if you stare. There's a reason that it hurts your eyes because it's hurting your eyes. Right. Yeah. Pain is what tells you you should stop. Well, yeah, we can look at the um, the eclipse like like the president did, right? Look up and 
No, you can't. You can't. You you can't blame how he is on the sun. He was like that before the eclipse. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, I hear that. Um, but uh, that's a whole nother story. Then <laughs> it's okay. You should show him your lights. You should show him your lights and don't give him glasses and just say, "What is stay uh, at it as what, long what, as possible." You, Adam, you're co-hosting the the tasting tomorrow. Huh? Excellent. I'm gonna be there. Yeah, I'll be hanging out. Uh, I'm not doing. Cool. I'm trying not to do too much. I'll just let him give a bunch of weed. He'll hang out. I was gonna do it at my spot, but as you can see, it would be a disaster by tomorrow if I tried to do this tomorrow here. <laughs> there was like cars right. and getting locked out and <laughs> not enough stuff. So I, I found a I found a place for him uh, locally here, uh, Cultivate This Energy. Uh, so they squeezed him in. Excellent. Right behind the guys from what? from uh, the Dude Grows. It's another podcast. So it's a uh, Kind yeah, of, do it's grows. A, it's yeah, a, recharge. Yep, little joint effort here where I brought in, uh, uh-huh. I brought in uh, Colin. So Colin uh, just takes a couple hours ahead, uh-huh. and then uh, after that, these guys have their they have their uh, same. Somehow they just did an invitational also, and they have a podcast also. It's like hmm, this seems very familiar, except uh, yeah, except it's funny because it's like between like there's like a different. Uh, we we both slackers in their own way, you know. Like to, it, it, they yeah, they're yeah. like less slacker because they got a couple more guys to like slack off each other. So I'm I'm a a bigger slacker, but at the same time, it all falls together in this magic way, which I like because it's more fun to, to do than than it is to be like, yeah, I've got these things, I'm ready to go, and then by the time it happens, you're all tired of it. You know what I mean? I like it like shit, yeah, yeah, shit yeah. arrives on the day, it all happens, it's done. That'd be fun. Yeah, it, it, and that's the way it's going. So. Uh, well, we'll have to get out there for one of those. For sure, for sure. But uh, oh. what are you guys yeah. doing? For, what are you guys doing for? Uh, what's, your, what's your big four twenty plan next Friday? I am flying. Well, Atlanta. what's that? Which oh, one? No. Who's talking? To you? Who's talking? Wolf, what's your? What's your plan? Uh, Mario. Go ahead, Wolf. I'm flying to Atlanta. What are you doing? <laughs> I have you going to Atlanta? Atlanta? What's happening in Atlanta? I gotta grab the syri- I gotta grab the CMH um, and go down there and talk some stuff about how we're gonna uh, you know, go go forward with a VC. But I know that I have a few people on my list, you guys included. Uh, when that comes out, I'd like to get out there and, and do some show it off, or we'll we'll mess around with it. Mm-hmm. But you run around with your spectrometer, well, like you love doing. So, and then you got to show me that lighting passport. So that's my yeah. plan for four. I, I I gave I I gave that back to Wes. He uh when when I when um when those guys and I stopped hanging together, um it was their light meter, so and I, I figured I was gonna have the uh A spectrometer sooner, but the 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 thing that's popping off that I'll talk to you when we get offline about is yeah, yeah. Po- finally, finally there. Um so I'll be able to go and uh, buy, buy buy some scientific toys and and put some people to work doing shit, so I can tell them to do it instead of wishing I was doing it. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll be I'll be a gopher. So whatever you need, both buy cannabis, Dad. That's what I tell everybody. <laughs> and I guess that means Adam, my big brother. So, yeah. um, big brother. What about you, Adam? Big brother. Bro- although, although you know, as cute as your mom is. The wolfster, the wolfster, on the mom route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's the that's the that's the route. What are you saying there? What are you saying, Mar? Well, uh, what what are your plans for for four twenty? A couple years back, we did that uh, over at the Tetra Hydro Club that uh, that event down there. We we did that. Yeah. No, I'm doing. You are. I got my ADSI over here, so I'm 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 locked down. Mm we're gonna have this place under under our command for once. Alarms will be turned off. off. The party will commence. That's basically what's gonna happen over here. We got, and the nice part about, it, like I said, it's uh, all falling together because of the fact that we've done it a couple times. And you just call back those people, and they know exactly what you like. You don't have to do much explaining at this point. Yeah. Usually, it's a lot of explaining. You're like, I want. 
They're like, yeah, 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 we know. And, and of course, it's only eight days away. Of course, you're going to call us. That's that's your style. You're right. Well, yeah. We were expecting you. And and <laughs> and I'm going to throw in a shameless plug. Come to the ADSI if you're listening. Of course, anyone that's listening will be wanting to come anyhow. But Lawrence Chernak, who did the Great Books of Hashish series, is going to be there. I'm going to be there. All kinds of Adam's friends are going to be there. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, yeah. And I all know. of us being there would be even better. Yes, oh, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Ahead, I, I forgot. This. I forgot the, the shameless Lawrence Trinier plug there. Good job. I'm glad I got you on the air, Wolf. Otherwise, I would have been. He would have been like, "Wait a minute, that's, I forgot that, to talk about yeah, me." Yeah, how that slip? You forgot to talk that about slip. We have the guy. Uh, one of my growers, uh, Dave, a grower, is ready to get into that with his yeah. uh, submission. So I got to work on that with him too. Get on. You didn't that. want to bother. Him. Get, no, there's no bother. I think I even heard you send me that that one message like that, and, and that was not a bother. I think I I thought I answered it and said no, but never bother. I told him like, do not bother Adam. No, that's such a joke. Don't even know, don't, don't even consider it a bother at all. When someone's going to bring you weed to a, to a, an event, you're like, Damn. there's never a, a bother or problem from that at all. Um, no doubt. Yeah. Well, uh, is there going to be? Are, are we all going to end up at that restaurant? That one Italian one that uh, we went to that one time? Uh, yeah, now that you now that you blew it Someplace again, in... probably not. Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Where? Uh, Odyssey. Where, hey, yeah, right? Right? over here. The Odyssey. You have blown up well, my spot when you come now. Home, <laughs> That's all right. When you come back, yeah. we'll, we'll go to Providence and we'll take you to some uh, some old school oh, yeah. Italian cuisine. Well, that Adam will come at, up this way too. That we'll you could have like a lot. Yeah, there it's like a more American Italian. This is like, well, this is probably the same, similar. It's Sicilian, but it's also uh-huh. yeah. There's George. Oh, don't call it Sicilian Italian. You'll piss them both off. Sicilian bread. You bite into it. You're gonna cut your mouth. But you know, I learned that <laughs> from the hot. Yeah. We know what we're doing. Working yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it under control. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Um, I would. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. It's definitely the, 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 if you want good Portuguese or Italian, you're going to Rhode Island. But, but in Portuguese, <laughs> a bunch right, of fake, baby. fake Italians. Hey, like, Portuguese over here. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's so what, funny. Uh, egg tips. Thing. Well, yep. well, I said everybody always thought I wasn't growing up there because they were like, oh, you, you must be Portuguese. So I was like, the Madeira <laughs> sauce. Yeah, a lot of Madeiras. <laughs> There's a lot of them around. That's for sure. Oh, you, you want to hear something funny? I'm actually in. I'm at sitting out front of a Madeira's house right now. Uh, my buddy Chris. Hey, yeah. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Think, go figure. I right? nailed it. I He's nailed got a fire it. Fire in his back. Rhode Island. Hey, Madeiras. See that was. How They're it. true Portuguese. They have the, his <laughs> uncle Jeff has the wine in the cellar. Yeah, it's some intense stuff. Now I don't drink now, but. He had a couple. The uncle, he's an older Portuguese guy, built the home himself, you know, all brick, beautiful. He took a trip down the stairs. I think he had too much of his wine. And he, he took a little fall down the steps a few weeks back. But that stuff, one sip, ugh, you know? That's funny. Well, that's funny. Portuguese. No, but that's like, that's, that's pretty much like, yeah, that, that shows you Rhode Island, the diversity of Rhode Island. Portuguese, <laughs> like, like, Rapa, yeah. disgusting stuff. Right, along right. those lines. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but wasn't Rhode Island the the first? Rhode Island is consi- there. You go. The one piece of tourist stuff I know about there. Rhode Island is considered the home of the um, American uh, the the First Amendment's right to uh, freedom of religion because it was the it's first that. place where you were not required to be a Christian by law. Roger Williams. Yeah, that's, a, that's, the, that's the universal answer in Rhode Island. Roger Williams. Roger, uh, yeah. Roger Williams. Uh, uh, <laughs> Roger Williams. They finally, <laughs> Something they old finally Roger Williams. The plantations, I believe, Providence, State of Rhode Island, and Providence Plantations. I think they finally did away with that. I could be wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, this state's interesting now. We have uh, the cultivation centers being built and whatnot. Adam, next time you get out here, I'm going to have to show you some of this stuff. It's pretty fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. Well, you're out here a lot, though. No, if not not, to, not a lot, but next time, really. uh, next time I will. Next time I definitely will, because it, it has evolved there a lot. And uh, they they have, did they open it up to more places now, or they're kind of like talking? They were talking about well, they, they, the the nepotism in the state is alive and well. I mean, you know, my my family owns the biggest um, dispensary here. I don't really work with them at all, but mm-hmm. so, they're trying to block some of the licensing for some of these cultivation centers that I'm actually working with with the lighting. So. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's an interesting time to be in this state. Not that I 
That's the good thing about my job is I can travel. I don't have to be stuck here. So. So. And the laws are changing, too. They, I think they want to go to 8-8 eight and eight now. Where we were, it was at one point, what, 24 and 24? Like anywhere else. Um, you know, messing around with the laws for the home growers. Right. And retail is taking a hit. So. Well, like, a, you know, anywhere that opens up is going to learn the hard lesson the hard way, which is why they, yeah. call, it, why they call it a hard lesson. And uh, it's mm-hmm. getting to the point where, you know, if people want to get into this industry, they're going to have to understand it. it's not easy and they need to do a lot of work if they want to separate themselves and there's a lot and th- <laughs> things like lighting can be like the, oh. the biggest mistake this is, as, as a guy who walks into a lot of places I always like that's the first thing I do is kind of look it's almost like looking at people's shoes you know what I mean you're like you walk in a grow room you look at the lights straight into the lights yeah. straight in as hard as you can don't stop blinking no, you just kind of you, you try to look at the hardware of the lights and not the actual burning lights. Well, but, but in general, you look and you see, you know, how did they place them? How high are they? How spread out? You know, these are they smart? Is there aisles? Is there no aisles? Are they making a big grid? You know, there's all these like little things you kind of take into uh, effect. And I think, uh, you know, as we get kind of like smarter and is it, a lot of it's going to come down to economics. You know what I mean? It's like how much does how long does it, how long does it last? Because it'll be stripped down. That's one thing I'm crazy about the lights. I noticed from you guys is that the I, there's a lot of hardware though. It seems like still like is it just to the, oh is somebody be, called because yeah, of the layout? Someone took the belt. Mm-hmm. Right. Tell me, tell me. So, so, someone told me the ballast was like an '80s boss amp that stuck with me. That was fun. Yeah, I mean, it, but it, it is kind of like you know, it it, it is kind of got a little retro vibe to it as far as like the amount. It's like got like seems like a lot going on. <laughs> like there's a lot going on. Well, it's because it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because it, it's four avionic gray capacitors. So it's like you know, it's it's it, it, you know, this Greg's mind and it's it's interesting, you know. But they are they're they're built they're they are built solid. If you if you know if you pick one up and shake it, you're not going to hear any rattling. Oh, you know, which right. is always a plus, cool. and uh, the heat shield does a lot to disperse heat. I mean, it's still it's still a D8, so we understand that mm-hmm. it's still going to get hot. But the heat shield does 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 some good work on on dispersing it. You know, it's it's a solid it's a solid fixture. It is, you know, nice. not, and and it's available heat. it's available everywhere in, in right now. Or how is it only how does the sales go? Uh, the sales going. Um, we have a few. Dis- we have some. We have distribution. Um, Heidi Farm. We have. We have Bioflora okay. up in Florida. Right. Uh, Florida, Canada. I meant Florida. Um, Florida, and, uh, Canada. Same know, thing. It's the same thing. I'm working direct, and I'm. I'm trying to really hit retail hard now. You know, especially right. uh, up in New England. Now, now with Vermont going uh, legalization. Uh, the any can show up there. I'm supposed to go up there next month. That's coming up actually in Burlington. Who knows how the market? I, I be. think I think I'm headed there. I I've got to check, really? but I think I'm supposed to be there. Well, yeah, I'll, is, that I'll that, is that the camping thing? No, we talking, talking about. No, it's in Maine. Um, the the any can show. Um, oh, yeah, New England yeah. can. Oh yeah. Adam, you don't do that. With, you you did Canacon last year, right? I yeah, did, with uh, you did the panel there. Yeah. Canacon. I, I prefer Canacon or MJBiz myself. I mean, but. You know, those are fun. So you, you get to see some, you know, some cool. of the celebs like Adam and those guys. You got to meet Odie and Sonny. That was really cool. The big um, celebs, the real big ones. It's like the, the Sonny's and exactly. the Odie's of the world. The Going there, but, but that was not bad. Give me some seeds, please. Right. There you, you know? go. No, it's, a, I don't it's good when these shows aren't just all, like, suits and, and then other shows are all just stony balloons. It's good to mix them up, you know, a little mix. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Emerald Cup. Emerald, Emerald Cup. Cup's the best. We know Emerald Cup's the best. We all know that. It is. It is the best. best event. I love. It. It's the best event of the year for sure, by far. Emerald Cup was it, fun. Uh, a couple days back. Well, remember we were all outside the uh, that yeah place where they had the show there. Who was it? Oh yeah. I don't know. Oh God, I don't. Where? Where? I don't remember. I had Emerald Cup a couple uh, years back. You know, I, over there yeah. by the thing. Uh, em, 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 Emerald Cup truck. 16. Definitely 2016. Uh, what year? We're in line for food. I I get to hang out with Lowenfeld and Randy Ritchie from Malibu Compost, and obviously Jeff from, uh, you know, the team of Mike Robes and all those books. 
and uh, Michelle from Dr. Zimes, and Marty Wana. I got to sample some of his stuff in, in uh, the Malibu tent. I was pretty suited. Is that a good word to use? I was blitzed or whatever, blazed. You know, so I sat there drinking water for a good two hours. But I had fun. Yep. You know. Well, and this year... I'm pushing for a couple of the other people that got not to get nominated or get, well, hell you nominated me. Um, I nominated both because I, I feel as though that you'd be the best recipient for that, you know? And I, I went and shared the picture that Jack signed, um, yeah. at, with the Jack, uh, remembrance picnic and all the stuff you do. For that. Yeah. I feel that you should be recognized more than, you know? And so that's what I do. Well, eventually, hopefully, but first, I, I would love to see the, the the Emerald Cup gives a lifetime achievement award. I would love to see them give that to Steve Murphy first, and yeah. and you know Steve, Bill Drake, the the people that I said you know someone get in touch, get in touch with Tim, uh, and 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 say hey we nominate these people because they are the people that the rest of us pretty much we're, everything we do is built on the foundation they did. And yeah. I, I I wouldn't disagree with any of the people that have already gotten it, but there are some people that where we are would not have even begun to be a thought without them, and we need to, you know, include them before they do get forgotten. Yeah, no doubt. It's important. We have to preserve that legacy, especially with, uh, with how things are changing so quickly and rapidly with recreational. You know, you have to yeah. recognize people that have, that have paved the way and those who still pay the ultimate price, you know, for this. You have to. You cannot forget them. That's why, you know, yeah. I got issues with some of these people getting the licensing and stuff. I go in there and they're telling me how things are going to be, how they're going to set up their rooms, and I just got to, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't know. You gotta bite my tongue sometimes, right. you know. Just changing the like, whatever it is, you know. Let them, let, them, <laughs> let, them, let them fail and then come to you. They come in all coming to That's me. That's what I said. Let them, <laughs> let them fail, then we'll, we'll go in there and fix it. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I'm 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 trying to get through to enough people to get them to understand straight from the get go. Here's what's coming. And if you're if if we're going to be real, if you, yes, be about making profit, but do it in a way that you're going to be able to continue to make profit for a long time, not constantly be chasing back and forth to to try and you you get a little edge on your on your competition. Your competition gets a little edge on you, but you're doing it um, sort of at the expense of everything. Instead of instead of race to the bottom, yeah. try to lift each other up. Mm. You know, that's a very, um, that's a very nice, that's a very nice Wolfie statement. Um, we're gonna ra- start, ra- we're gonna start wrapping up actually because I, we had to, we, right. we had to rent, we had to rent our. Got studio. some shout outs to do, don't you? Exactly. So that's why I want to like get the, I want to get the, to the shout out part soon. Uh, I want to give you guys the opportunity to give your shout outs, of course, because uh, you are the guests. The guests get to go first, of course. So uh, who wants to go first, Mario or Wolf? I'll give a couple of shout outs. There you go, um, Mario. Jump in there. Yeah, well, if you want to go first, then you've got better. No, shots. go ahead. You have better go shots. Ahead. My, your shots uh, are way better than my shots. Shout no. out to Adam and, and Wolf, obviously, for being OGs and for you know having me on the show with them. I'd like to give a shout out to my uh, the National Growers Coalition, the whole crew over there, Lou, Adam, all those guys, um, Luna, Drew, all the good work they're doing. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to Odie. Ray Bowser, Homegrown National wow, News. Wow, uh, wow, yeah. wow, wow. With some fire genetic <laughs> top running. Um, the crew over at Geek Farms, Mike, get me that muffin top and this like rock. And um, who else can we give shout outs to? There's quite a few people. My mom for uh, dealing with me. Jesus. So I'll, uh, yeah. Double I'll, shout I'll out go to with mom. That. Double shout out to mom. Yeah. She's <laughs> listening, I believe. Uh, and she, well, she says hi. She wanted me to give you a shout out. Oh, very good. All right, that's that's good for now, right? That's good for now. You did good. You did good. You did good. You did good. Hey, Wolfie, Wolfie, throw it in there. Okay, well, this is a shout out to everyone out there that puts their heart into growing and loves their plants and does the best for them that they can. Uh, I want to make you aware there's a new product out there called Grow Cure. 
It's a chlorine dioxide. It costs less than any of the other ones on the market. It works better oh, man, than stole, anything else for killing my, fungal you stole, stuff. You stole my shout out. That was but, a, but that's okay. Cool. Well, just shout out. This is me. I'm a national ambassador for them. This is my little plug. Good. You're doing all my work for me on that whole one right there. That was that was literally it, it that works. was literally. I it leaves like, zero residue. <laughs> you know more. About zero it. residue you know more about down it. to the day oh. before harvest, and it's safe. No test fuck ups. Oh, Kills the fungal them. shit. Kills awesome. the fungal shit. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for uh, being on point with that one. Uh, you know, I'm, who else you got shout outs for? Your mom? Uh, <laughs> well, my mom who God bless her is no longer uh, with us. Um, you know, my, my my significant other Candace, without whom what little bit of shit I still have together wouldn't be. Uh, and my dogs for keep, for keeping the other part of my sanity there. Um, I'll see everyone at ADSI, and I'm shout looking to, forward to it. Gotta do yeah, shout, you gotta, you gotta give a shout out to Susan, of course. For, for of course, to to, to my for, to my to the sister of my heart, Susan K. <laughs> and we we love you dearly. Our, our hearts are with you. For keeping us informed on exactly where we're both at at all times. So that's always cool. yeah. You get at that right. Um, well, cool, awesome. cool. And then, um, any way to get in touch with you guys? Like, what's the fat? What's like as far as the shout outs to all your friends? But what's the best way to get in touch with uh, you guys for lighting? If you want to get some like uh-huh. qu- quotes on some crazy, like, I need sixteen thousand lights now, but I want to pay for them later. <laughs> Be like one of those. Yeah. Oh, you have no idea. I have people ask me to finance their their, their uh, build ups. Of course, and, like bottom of now for the first one but you can hit me up at um maz m-a-z at revmicro.com if you'd like or get at me on facebook um uh, mario napoleone jr good luck with that one or uh father adam the wolf looking for me <laughs> but the best way to find me is probably through that maz at revmicro.com sounds good sounds good and and wolf what do you got and you got some contacts i i have i have an email which is wolf at farmerinthesky.com, all one word, all small case. Uh, I'm at a bunch of the different shows and things. Um, I'm on Facebook, either Cincinnati Tips Magazine or uh, my own personal one, Michael Wolf Siegel, or uh, How to Grow Wiser, um, which is the name of the one of two books that's going to come out this year. We're also doing. We're going to be putting out the Farmer in the Sky so far which is the first book and all of the columns from Cincinnati Tips magazine, um, and maybe a, a tie-in, you know, between times, talk about a little bit of where they, what was going on um, in and around me as I was writing those. Um, other than that, though, you know, <laughs> if we're supposed to meet, we're going to. Uh, and if you need help, if you, do, if you uh, are designing, if you're considering going into a, commercial operation reach out to me i do consulting i'm about doing it sustainably profitably i work with some of the best people out there i don't know everything but someone i know knows what i don't sounds, exactly sounds good sounds good we, uh, all right and uh well, i want to give a big shout out to uh, everybody for pulling this together because that would have been it's like we're like one step closer to being in our own spot. It's looking, yeah. looking, it's looking sweeter every time. You're like Man, inside the building. Soon we'll be in the building. Been more so, uh, there. big shout out to MTI KTI for obviously making it happen here. Big shout out to Josh for hanging around and just getting all tired and being like, "What the hell am I doing here?" But oh, man. he gets to ride. The, he at least gets to ride the thing, ride the bus. Uh, thank you, uh, Resident Alchemist, for making it happen. Thank you for the what's the name of the limo service again here. Forget what, uh, a five star oh, limousine. Oh, there you go. That's it, right there. You mm-hmm. got to Yeah, boom. Five star limousines mm-hmm. for pulling it together and, and getting us. We're gonna have this next week too. Something a little bit better, I think, though. A little bit better. A little bit better. What better Bigger. light show? Bigger. They have this huge thing there. Um, yeah, this is pretty tight. <clears throat> shout out to uh, Ace down at the farm who just getting herself a brand new four by four bulldog thing. Yeah. Oh, the little she got cool. the because yeah, yeah, I think it was a little bit mm, badass. Yeah, so it's always fun. Have a fucking good Sorry. Ace gets to have the new toys and, and uh, shout out to uh, a beautiful ICC and little Nick. And Nick went protesting at McDonald's 
yesterday. Uh, so what did they take off? Uh, they take off the McRib. No, they, not the they, reverse. Reverse, like he was no out there. Sauce? No sauce. It was there. With, he was there with the Humane League, and they have uh, surrounded the McDonald's, and were anti like uh, animal. They're basically animal rights yeah. activists. Mm-hmm. So very proud. And then Nick yeah. rolled up, and then this old guy came up and was yeah, like came up and he first he was trying to like he's trying to trip Nick up. You know, cause first he goes like this this kid doesn't know why he's here. So what is he doing here? And he goes, I know why I'm here. Oh, right. And then and then the guy is like, you do well. He's like, well, you know that potatoes have, they're alive too, right? And he's like, you like potatoes, oh, right? God. And he's like, I don't that eat one. McDonald's potatoes. They're GMO potatoes. <laughs> and then the guy's like, whoa, GMO potatoes. I threw him off with that. And then, uh, and then the guy's like, well, you like regular potatoes, right? They're, they're alive. He goes, they don't have faces. It's like, damn, that kid's yeah. Mr. Awesome. Potato. So, Shit, yeah, Nick. I said they got eyes, though. I told him they have eyes. He goes, what? Yeah. Go, yes, they have eyes. So, anyway. So shout out uh, to my beautiful wife Cece for taking Nick to his first protest at five years old. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it was a uh, he loved it though. He made his own signs and stuff. It was pretty. Arts and crafts time, and then a little standing up. They, for, were, they were killer. That's cool. I'll throw them up on the site. All right, see you guys uh, soon. And uh, next yeah. week, next week we're going to be in the building with ADSI live twenty. One week for whatever that many hours that is from now. Right now, this is going to be deep in. Place is going to be. Blo- there'd be so much smoke the fire department might show up for real oh. it may really yeah. happen <laughs> <laughs> it might. it's going to be fun it is going to be fun it is It is. maybe I'll see you guys out there if I can I mean that's excellent let's do this again too All right, right. a lot of fun 100% thanks guys for joining us uh, I, don't, I don't know what happened to James and I don't know what happened to JJ when they should have zagged I think is what they say is how I it's, they it literally just like things. like were on their way and then I knew at least Duke called in and said he's not showing up so I was like man a three way no show must a, have been a breeder conference going on three way no yeah. show hmm. that's a pretty bad one uh, oh well at least at least you look like you're in front of like said, but KTI looks like he's like the president in front of like five microphones sitting here <laughs> Nope. Excuse me. She's got a right here. <laughs> like, the the most important. Yes, and uh, so going for, on. today I've decided. Yeah. No, so, guys, uh, thanks for hanging in there, and we'll get you back on the show later and see you next week, I hope. Either, either yeah, either definitely. Or both. Guys. Right yeah, on. See you next week. All right, peace, guys. Next week. See you. Peace. Peace. Right. peace out. All right, guys, everybody. Thank you, guys, everybody. We'll see you guys next week. Practically every yeah. one of the top 40 records being played on every radio station in the United States is a communication to the children to take a trip, to cop out, to groove. The psychedelic jackets on the record albums have their own we don't want you to smoke genetically modified ganja. We want you to smoke the real thing. We want you to smoke the natural herb. Some call it marijuana. Some call it sense media. Some call it lamb's bread. And some people call it...